That was weird. All right, here we go. Episode nine. Today is February sixth, two thousand fourteen. This is uh, our Super Ad Bowl slash Valentine's Day conspiracy episode. Take it away, Obi. All right. And we'll be rolling here in a little bit. This is the most quiet start we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, I kind of uh, messing up my music a little bit here, but we are going to start here shortly. All right, so give me a visual cue when we're about to start so I don't like talk over the music. <laughs> I got you, buddy. I got, I got uh, the puppy sleeping inside my hoodie. Or trying to. And every time I take a sip of my beer, she's like, what's that? Let me get some of that. Right here. Right now. It's horseplay. Obi-Wan X2. Yogi Zilla. In person. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. That's all I can say, and I just stopped the music right off the bat without even turning it down a little bit. Today we're going to talk about uh, some some uh, possible conspiracy theories with uh, Valentine's Day. And, um, of course, the Super Ad Bowl, because you know all the ads that went off during Super Bowl, of course. Yogi Zilla, what is up, my man? What's up? That used to be that was one of the old Super Bowl ads, right? Wasn't it the Budweiser? Yeah, yeah. Then you know the uh, was that or you know Bud, Bud. Wise. Yeah, yeah. The frogs. <laughs> and then they start bouncing and everything. Yeah, it's it's kind of. Yeah. I I watched it, and and my dad came over, and wait 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 let's let's save Super Bowl stories for when we got we got a whole segment for that. I mean Super Ad Bowl Super Ad Bowl. We don't want the greedy people in the. Uh, and fudge L to oh, like, be oh, like yeah, hey, yeah, you don't have hey. proper licensing for that. That's another story we're going to get to. Uh, quite a few people got uh, uh, fines and whatnot for for not having the right uh, documentation to, to, to say certain things. So we're going to make sure <laughs> that we are careful. Um, Yogi, Crazy. what have you been doing this last week? I mean, just uh, besides gaming. I mean, really. I mean, this is kind of what we do every time. So, might as well get into it right now. What have you think, been doing? I mean, what's up? I think well, uh, we've been both uh, you and I have been evolving <laughs> along with the show. So we're like kind of expanding past gaming. We're talking more about movies and shows and t technology and all kinds of all things geeky. <laughs> so I haven't done are. too much. I haven't done too much gaming, dude. Uh, I've been trying to, but it just hasn't worked out that way. I've done a lot of mobile gaming because I'm on the run all the time. I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. on the run for the feds. <laughs> do you play? Do you play the uh, the with the, on your cell phone? The um, what is it? Candy Crush. No, Marvel Puzzle dude. Quest is so much better, dude. Oh my god. I get so many dude, crush. I get so many invites for the freaking Candy Crush, Diamond Dash. What's the other one? There's a bunch of them, but like I get like hundreds of freaking invites on, on Facebook for those games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, well, please stop, no. Well, I, I got sucked into it, okay. And and I'm not blaming I'm not blaming It was your wife, wasn't it? I love her to death. Yeah, but it was my wife. So yeah. she's like, "Hey, you should try this game." So I was like, "Okay, I'll try it once because then you can like, you can send stuff back and forth, you know, to each other." Yeah, the gifting. And that's how to get you hooked like, in, okay, man. Yeah, dude. See, I tried she's that with on like, uh, on Farmville. She's on like level three hundred or some shit like that, and yeah. I'm like level fifty. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so when I can't beat a level, I just say, can you beat this for me, please? My wife, I'll probably be on here a little bit later. She'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that all the time. My my puppy's getting restless. <laughs> I see that. It's like, it's like, oh, man, I don't think our uh, our third co-host and our third co-host for the night, Yogi didn't introduce. Uh, I know. Is, um, this is Sanya. Sanya. <laughs> say so hi, Sanya. Guys... Say hi. Look, camera's over there. She's looking at me. No, camera's over there. Okay, he's, she, she, she needs some more training. She hasn't been uh, no reason. She hasn't been onboarded properly. Now she's licking me, but uh, so yeah, man. Uh, you know, outside of like gaming, the usual shenanigans. Uh, you know, I think I'll cover most of this in a dust off. But uh, yeah, I, well, should, you want to you want to mention the big news or or shall I? No, no, we're yeah, we're gonna we're gonna say something about that in a minute. Um. Because I'm trying to get the I didn't do the text for the for the the stream for the overlay because I Wait. got sidetracked because we were talking about something <laughs> else. Um, so we don't want to talk about our our big news. Oh, our big news. Yes, our yeah, big that's news. That's what I was making text to. That's what I was making text. For. Oh, okay, okay. I won't, um, I won't spill I the beans then. I didn't get it done in time, so yes, I'm not even gonna make it. So we we can tell them right now if you want to. And it, guys, this is exciting for us. Um, as you guys know, this is episode nine, so we've been we've done ten shows, including the pilot, and this has gone Ow. far farther. As Yogi's getting bit in the background, this is going so so much farther than we would have ever expected this fast. Yogi, since you have all the details, you have all the documents for this. Let's let our viewers know what's going on. This is exciting news for us, so we want you guys to know as well. So yeah, we got our first network deal. We're on Stitcher Radio, and I love I love Stitcher because Stitcher's more of like a indie kind of market. It's an open market. You know, everybody's got a, a chance to have the voice get heard, but they're still pretty selective about who they let on. Just not as selective as like iTunes or iHeart Radio. But mm -hmm. um, so you know, it's an honor to be part of Stitcher Radio. That's my preferred way of listening to podcasts and. I'm not, I'm beyond stoked, and uh, you know, we you saw the little custom podcast uh, cover art that I did, and uh, oh oh oh, is that is that no part no no of... keep talking no 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 keep talking oh that's was, right yeah that's I right forgot. that's right I was I, it's in the Dropbox <laughs> Go yes ahead. I, there's some other goodies in there too, but uh, yes yeah, so you know we're 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 stepping things up um, there's a lot of things in 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 the works so that's kind of why I've been focusing on to kind of set that foundation. And uh, put some systems in place so that it'll be easier, like, in the weeks to come. You know, it'll be like clockwork. And then, you know, all the stuff that takes up a lot of time will take less time. And then we'll have more time for gaming. <laughs> and other stuff, of course. And, and that's, and that's like I said, guys, that's... When he told me this, he goes, o OMG. And I was like, are you going to tell me the rest of the text? I mean, it was just an OMG. That was it. I'm like, OMG what? And he goes... Stitcher just text me. We're on. We're good. We're we're there, and I'm. They don't even know what he's talking about, <laughs> because he tells me everything. He tells me what we're doing, and and then you know we got different things that we're doing. And but he's like, dude, Stitcher. I was like, oh, oh, we are good. Yes. So I told my wife, and she goes, oh my goodness, you guys are going like crazy. That's what we want to do. <laughs> so. And it was oh, funny man. too because we were we were just talking on the phone earlier, and then it was like, all right, I think that's everything. And then all of a sudden, it, then I get that that message. I'm like, oh wow, I did not expect that to be so fast. <laughs> yeah, we had like we had like a 45 minute phone call uh, talking about what we were going to be doing this week and episodes to come for you guys, little surprises and special guests and whatnot. And and I was like, is there anything else? I mean, because we had talked for so long. He's like, no, I think that's it. Literally, I literally. Hit end call on my phone, and I have a touch screen, so I end call and I put it down on the table in like two seconds. I mean, literally, I just turned my head and his tweet tweet. He texts me, <laughs> dude. <laughs> so it was really really exciting for us, and we just wanted you guys to know that. I mean, it's just, it's it's something that we're, I mean, we're stoked. I mean, really, we're stoked. Um, I I don't lost my train of thought trying to you know. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm happy, man. This is something that we've been that we were gonna be going um, going for anyway. 
but we were thinking it's going to take, oh, it's going to take several episodes. We're going to probably get into the triple digits before we really get recognized. And we're not even in double digits yet. Yep. Yes. So, Obi, what are, Obi, Yogi, what is the next step for us then? You want to tell everybody that, where we're trying to get to? So, um, yeah, the next step would be to get on iTunes, you know, because you can't ignore the the Mac and you know the app, the Apple crowd you know mm. and personal feelings aside you know I just I just persuaded my wife not to get an iPhone four so <laughs> she got the <laughs> LG two so I was like hey you can if you want to but then you got to deal with iTunes you got to deal with Apple you got to do yeah with, I said everything you deal with on your iPad you got to deal with on your cell phone she goes oh, okay I'm gonna get this LG two I like that look better I was like yeah you just don't want that iPhone see I, and, and I started, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, she started looking up like uh, different, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the word for it? Um, blah, blah, blah. Different reviews on the phone itself uh, and different spots. And she had, there was several of them that were like, oh, this is the best phone in the world. And then there was a lot of them that were like, oh, this phone's a piece of crap. <laughs> so she's like, I don't know if I really want it. I was like, well, you know what? It's up to you. You get whatever you want. That's for the LG? Yeah, the LG2. And um, it's basically just like um, about as about like my Evo uh, 4G, um, but it's a little bit thinner, actually. It's got a little bit bigger screen, um, and that's probably the one I'm going to go to when I, my upgrade's up now, too. So we're going we're gonna to be getting some, uh, some cool phones. Yeah. But anyway, do we do want to appease Apple and we do want to appease those um, the Mac users, of course, because I'm not blaming Mac users. I just suggest they get a PC. But uh, <laughs> we do want to cater to those guys as well. So we are shooting for iTunes rate or uh, <laughs> iTunes, iTunes, and what's the other one? Oh, iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio, which I I do listen to iHeartRadio, and my wife listens to iHeartRadio a lot. Um, you know, a lot of the Christian stations and, and whatnot yeah, yeah. she listens to. And um, I know a lot of people that listen to iHeartRadio. So definitely is that's one of our goals um, for myself and Yogi here to uh, just be getting, just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, you know, we got to meet a couple times a week because they want us national somewhere, you know, something that, you know, something live, you know, that's great. Well, I see that the thing I, that I see as a good position for us to be in is Stitcher Radio. Is I think they have the most podcasts on their network. I mean, they got so many shows on there; it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and but they're not as well known. I think iHeartRadio has done a little better job of marketing. But I think it's cool to be in a position where we're not necessarily in a ground level, but we could kind of team up with Stitcher and like this. We've been communicating back and forth via email and stuff. And, right. uh, you know, they're, they're anxious to, to, to work with us. You know, and I don't want to shoot my load preemptively, but one of the things we're talking about, this is something they know. They don't... Sorry. <laughs> you know. Dude, that's just kind of, I don't want to shoot my load preemptively or nothing. But I'm getting attacked over here. But, um, you know, one, one of the things that they thought about letting, letting us do, which I think is really exciting, is having a 24-7 live station on, on Stitcher Radio. Whereas people could tune into our content at any time, so oh man, <laughs> yeah, dude. So like, uh, you know that that's we're something we're, get, we're we're seriously gonna have to recruit some other casters for that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. Uh, I, I've already been like talking to some people to see who's interested, and I've I've had some people in mind for a few years. So it's kind of just good timing now. You know, once we have that set up, we can have like a whole network, and you know, use horseplay as kind of like the flagship show. So that's, that's that's huge, you know. The well, Stitcher no. Stitcher to me is like the biggest deal right now out of all the networks I was looking at for us. So right. I'm I'm super well, stoked. Well, in that in that being said, why don't we just tell them about the the other news? The uh, website? No, the N word. The N word. Ours. The N word. You said... just you whispered it to me. Oh, network. network. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. So the we got the we got the foundation up for our, our own network, but the model we're gonna be using is syndication. She, she said the N word. I'm like, wait, I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible this time yeah, around. No. 
this but, is you know, so, this is sort of a PG show, okay? We want yeah, to yeah. Show. We're middle. Sort of. We're middle of the road. I think we're pretty good. Yeah, uh, I don't know about yeah. <laughs> we zigzag back and forth. Yeah, you know. We, we do a slalom all the way down the road, you know. We're not. We're not like uh, Kevin Smith and Smodcast. He's crazy. Oh no. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I think what's gonna be interesting about the model I'm looking at is that most networks have like an inclusive, well actually, other way around, an exclusive model, whereas it's very elitist and very selective and only like the top dogs to get in. And you have right. to get on the only way you can get in before that, it gets to that point is on a ground level when they don't have, they haven't made a name for themselves. And you look at uh, the Nerdist. Nerdist is probably the best example. I think Chris, Chris uh, Hardwick is kind of a douche. <laughs> he actually pulled his show off of Stitcher for a little while. He pulled some of his shows off of Stitcher because he was upset that they were slapping ads on his content. It's like, well, you're getting a free network to syndicate and deliver your content. You don't pay don't a single you, thing. You don't know? you have to pay something to get on there? I mean, to to continuously be on there, though? No. No? So that's what I love about Stitcher. Like, if it was Apple... You so know, basically, the iTunes? guy is just being greedy and saying, no, I don't want you to make money off me because I'm not making enough. I mean, right? Nerdist Network is like Machinima and like, um, you know, uh, Polaris, uh, Giant Bomb. Those are all huge networks. You know, um, Huffington Post is another good, good example where they just combine everybody else's content. So, you know, he he's not struggling. Um, well, another good one is Geek, Geek and Sundry. I love, I love Geek and Sundry, uh, Felicia Day and all of them. But uh, yeah, I thought I, I always find him to be a douchebag, and I think you know you gotta realize one hand washes the other. You know, I don't mind plugging Stitcher. You know, I don't mind them putting an ad in front of my content for because I'm getting the privilege of being able to put my content on their network, and you know, and and, and you for know for free for free, and you know what they also go to the the extra length sometimes to promote your content on top of that if they like you. So, you know, why not make good with them? I mean, they have account managers that contact you personally and let you know about your your partner, uh, your content provider stuff, and all the stuff that's involved with that, uh, all the settings you could do and everything, all the possibilities, all the options. You know, they're really professional people. So I'm, I'm all for Stitcher, you know. And what I, what I, what I want to do with our network is be more I- inclusive rather than exclusive, you know, get some people that maybe just starting out or looking to get started, help them out. And, you know, we just collaborate together and cross promote each other. And, you know, rather than just holding on to a little tiny slice of pizza, just have a, a bigger pie to share. I think that's right. a much better model. And you don't really see that out there. You know, there's a lot of foolish competition where whereas everybody should be thinking about, you know, how can I help the next guy? do what I just did, if not better, you know? Right. The, the, well, and that being said, that being said to everybody that is listening and listening in the future or, or, or even watching the live show, um, if you guys do have something that you guys want to do or want to say or want to talk about, all you got to do is let us know. If we can make it into something to where you guys, you're going to be broadcasting on this day, then that's that's even better uh we would love to have anybody that just wants to start it i mean if you don't know what to do um come be a co-host on this show we would love to have you um this show is going to be run by co-hosts okay um it's for for our viewers uh that's everything yes myself and yogi zilla are the host of horseplay but we want other people to join in too you know, we'll we'll do different if we have more than three people. We'll do different overlays to where we can get people going, and and get people's face on here. You know, that's fine. I have no problem with that because if if you guys are willing to to support us and and willing to sit there <laughs> and and say to us that you know, hey, we're gonna watch you or we're gonna listen to you at least every day or how every week, you know. We want to support you, and if you want to do something like this, even if it's not casting or even if it's not nothing like what we're doing, and it's, say, it's streaming video games, we, we both know a lot about that as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can that we would love to help others that are just starting out this. And even if you're not starting out and you want to come to a friendly, you know, a, a friendly environment where we just we expect you to just have fun, love to do what you do, and there's no problems with anything, really. Uh, so, but that being said, we'll just kind of move on a little bit. But uh, we just want to let you guys know that uh, there's a lot of things coming from us. 
Um, little recap because we just said a whole bunch, Yogi. <laughs> a whole bunch. All at and one. I that's are... just a, just the introductions. Yes, that's just the introductions, guys. So you guys got a great show coming to you tonight, but we are officially on Stitcher. You guys can check us out. Uh, Yogi, do you have a link that you can pop out real quick? Uh, the easiest way to get to it right now would be to just uh, go to Stitcher.com, and then you can search for Horseplay, and it'll come right up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think what else it could be a good way to get to it. That's easy to remember. Well, and that's oh. the best way. Oh, there's right. a better a better way also. We also got the the this is uh the website uh the beta website, geekyantics.wordpress.com, which is uh, our network Geeky Antics uh, network global. We're gonna try to do a worldwide thing. And that's and, and and a lot of the stuff that we're saying we're actually gonna be featuring in other shows as well because uh, we're actually gonna have a full. You know, a launch of our of of the of the network and the website and everything, and we're actually going to do it on horseplay because this is something that we're just really excited about. And we just we want to share it with everybody. Uh, if 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 everybody, if one person out of ten says, "Hey, dude, we can try that," you know, let's do it. You know, we're we do this because we love it. You know, that's I mean, for me, I do this because I love to to sit here and, and talk and collaborate with one of my friends that we have the same interest. Even if you have, don't have the same interests as us, we talk about a lot of different shit. Okay. Uh, down from, uh, with even today's, even today's show. So, um, but we are going to get right into it here. And, um, some of the today's, Wow, I didn't even forget what I was even going to say. I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> I'm trying to calm the um, puppy down. Yeah, I know. I'm trying, and I'm looking at your camera and going, oh, oh, yes, puppy. She's, she's getting fussy. Yeah, it's all right. It's like a baby. She wants to be snuggled. Yeah, right. Um, well, we do have some news for some um, uh, some some future. Uh, basically, it's uh, our man crush and geek girls segment. Um, it's it's part of the uh, part where we actually talk to if we do have a special guest on the show. But in the future, we are going to have some of the crew of the Zombie Cast uh, should be joining us, um, and that's hopefully on episode ten. So next episode, next week Thursday, we'll get some of those guys in and talk some zombie talk. That's gonna be that's gonna be really fun. I gotta go brush up on freaking Walking Dead, dude. I got three <laughs> seasons to watch. Um, Hopefully, my wife's watching right now, and she can say, okay, hey, we're going to start recording Walking Dead, and then she'll find it for me online so I can go get it, because <laughs> I don't know. I can't ever find that crap. Do you know Do you know if she's watching? I don't know. I If she decides to, and she says, hey, you know, then yeah, she's watching, because she just said something. Usually, she pops up in chat uh, on the stream here. So Yeah, because it's usually a Sunday night uh, thing, like around 9. But uh, I catch it through unorthodox means. <clears throat> well, she just she would just pull up the uh, the channel that it's on because usually the channel has a you know, online to where you can watch past episodes and even on Netflix. I mean, if it's three seasons old, I can at least watch the first two seasons on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then just get that third season from offline. So, but um, that's that's some more that we're going to be talking about here uh, in the next couple of weeks. And then since we're um, we're going to be having more guests on this show. We want to give um, other people um, chances to um, try to, to, to be able to get on this show. I'm losing train of thought here, yo. <laughs> but um, we want to be able to, when, when we ask, you know, or when we ask or when you say, hey, I'd like to be a guest, we'll basically ask you what you, you know, um, you know what do you want to talk about? You know, it's just so it's not to to, to pry too much, but we want to make sure that you're going to fit right for what show we're actually doing. Because we do have, you know, certain shows that we are doing. And um, we're going to do a zombie cast. I just realized this. We're going to do our zombie podcast or our zombie cast three days, four days before Valentine's Day. And yeah, it makes sense because, you know, people that observe Valentine's <laughs> Day are zombies. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we have to make sure that we bring that point up uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it's gonna be like the, 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 So to be clear, there's the podcast Zombie Cast. We have a bunch of friends over there, and some of them will be joining us for our own zombie themed pseudo Zombie Cast show. 
So we're gonna talk about zombie games and whatnot. I mean, I think maybe in episode ten we might not do it so heavy zombie theme. I think we might just talk about a little bit about The Walking Dead and what's what happens with, when the season comes back this this coming Sunday. Oh no no no, we're doing it's all zombie theme. And if we're gonna go zombies, we're gonna go zombie big hardcore. That's just <laughs> how it is. We're so gonna we got break to... out. We're gonna break out freaking zombie zombie land. We're gonna break out with the heroes and we're gonna bring Walking Dead. We're gonna bring out all the zombie stops. Be looking for that next week, guys. Um, but since we are having lots of guests on the show, um, and we're going to be uh, doing different uh, types of, uh, of video formatting and trying to make sure that we connect, because we I, I love being live. I love being um, not just live uh, talking, but I love being on video and actually being, uh, being able for you guys to actually see us, see our facial expressions, see what we're thinking and saying and doing in the background. Because that's the one thing that the podcast listeners, I know I, I love you guys to the bottom of my heart and from the bottom of my heart to or from either or to and from the bottom of my heart. And I really appreciate you guys. But if you guys can't make that on, on Thursday the tonight starting at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time all the way till one and nine times out of ten, we go further than that. So um Really appreciate that, but we are going to be trying different, uh, like I said, video formats to make sure that the show does doesn't tank um, and doesn't either go off air or something because we don't want that. Uh, so we're going to be doing different things with uh, Google Hangout uh, on air and in stream and, of course, on Twitch. And we just, um, of course, on Twitch. Yeah, I just, I was reading part of it because I couldn't remember at all. <laughs> and then I just kind of... I look back at the screen. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to get right into it. The next good thing we are going to get to, of course. Did you want me to go over some of the bullet points on that down below? On uh, which part? Oh, no, we, got it. we just got a lot of news. If you want to tackle that now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to get right into... My do my Yo. two of my dogs are fighting each other, by the way. So if I if I start cracking up, it's not because of any anything you're doing. This is gonna be a funny cast. Oh my lord! They're, for you guys that are gonna, gonna kill each other. It, for you guys that do uh, watch it live, it's so funny. You guys can you can get on here and, and check us out. But we are gonna get right into the obligatory. Oblig say it, Yogi. I can't the, talk. The oblig obligatory news. Yeah, uh, because, you know, everybody needs to do news. It's kind of the thing you need to do. It's the right thing to do. All right. We'll be right back. And with that short intermission, welcome to the obligatory news. We need to make a sound clip for that. <laughs> Seriously. So, because if I don't have to say it every time, I won't screw it up every time. Really. I mean, that's just how it is. Mm, yeah. It's a fair point. I, I don't when, we, when we step things I'm up. I'm out of my other mouth, so just go ahead. <laughs> well, it, see, that's another thing I've been looking at. Uh, some mixing boards that uh, mm. and some sound samples. Because uh, part of the 24-hour uh, station thing would be getting... They're going to kill each other. My, my, my big dog's going to eat my, my puppy. But anyway, is uh they have like a lot of cool things you could do to like set up live streams and uh, switch between play playlists and live shows and all this stuff. And it's so much stuff, and I've been doing research on it more and more. Uh, the closer we get to that point, and we may not be that far away from it, but definitely uh we're gonna be uh reaching out to some people to do some shows. But anyway, it's on to the news, the obligatory news. So you want me to start it off, and then we'll switch off because quite a bit. It's been a pretty eventful week. Yeah, you just read it. <laughs> you can you can do the whole thing. I mean, I'll do it when you need to, but yeah, go ahead. All right. So uh, one of my uh, personal new favorites, uh, new favorite podcast to be specific, the Sega Addicts pad podcast is now the gaming of the shoe. This is not big news unless you're really into podcasts, and if it, if you are, then there you go. Now you know something. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's a it's a buzzer. It's that my phone is telling me to hurry up. <laughs> Uh, so, and then, uh, if you guys missed the golden days of gaming, by the way, this show should definitely be a good thing to go to, because, uh, they mm -hmm. get into, like, a lot of the 
old style kind of games, you know, the, the sort of kind of magic that was lost in the era when Sega and Nintendo, you know, kind of dominated, you know, so I think they kind of c- capture a lot of that nostalgia there. Mm-hmm. So a, l- a little bit of game releases, I'm not going to get too deep into them because there's so much junk that comes out these days, not even worth talking about. But one game I did notice that might, might be worth looking at is South Park, The Stick of Truth. It's now available for pre-order on Steam, and it comes out on March 4th. Now, what's interesting about it is that it's a $59.99 game. 60 bucks, 60 bucks and change, South you know, Park tax. video game? I yeah, guess. and for a PC game, it's a little steep. Usually, PC games are cheaper than console games. Usually, PC games are around 40 bucks. Um, yeah. But, you no, know, because I, I take that back. Uh, the last time when the group of games came out uh, with like Ghost, and the Ghost was fifty nine ninety nine. But you think about Ghost from South Park, it doesn't really. Yeah, I it, think there's really no comparison. Why is there it that is... much? See, I don't even remember. This game was. Uh, I remember originally. I know one of my kids was was curious about it coming out because he's really big into South Park. You know, I, I used to be, but not so much anymore. I think it lost its edge. But um, you know, that this this game was a few years in development. I think they kept delaying or whatever. And it was supposed to come out of the console. I don't know if it ever did. And if this, I don't know if this is a port. I'm pretty sure it's a port. But uh, it's an RPG game. You know, it's kind of like a gauntlet style type thing. Uh, I guess you could say. And, you know, it looks promising. It looks promising, but. Not for 60 bucks, whatever. That's crazy. And why did it take this long to come to the PC? Who knows? So now for some bigger news. There's still buzz spreading around. And I'm sure by now you heard about this whole fiasco, Obi. The whole uh, people were raising a big stink because Machinima was paying content providers to love Xbox One. And, and in the same token, Microsoft was paying them to say nice things about the Xbox One. And people are acting like this is news. Mm. Like, this doesn't it's, happen every day. It's the same thing they do every day. Yeah, so that's what, you know, that's what I put in a note. That it's not really news, unless you're a fanboy with blind contempt for anything Microsoft, or you live in Amish country. That's what I put in there, and that's really what I believe. You know, because marketing companies... <laughs> They're always going to hire major networks and content providers to b- spread brand awareness. That's, that's what they do. You know, mm-hmm. they, 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 you know, it, big companies don't do the marketing. So they usually outsource it, send it out. They hire PR companies, you know, ad companies. And those companies work with other, you know, content providers and marketing channels or whatever. And, they, and you know, they spread the budget dollars. And that's it. But, you know, people are... They're acting like this is the news of the century. It's like, like it's like it's the NSA, you know, monitoring your 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 WoW game. <laughs> but anyway, and, and by the way, for any of the fanboys out there, Sony and Nintendo do this too. So get over it. <laughs> they do really <laughs> every day. Thousands of dollars saying, "Hey man, we're gonna hook you up with some free shit. Say some cool shit about it." <laughs> exactly. See that, that, I mean, that's just how it is. I mean, well, see, I mean, are they are they literally are they literally giving them money? Well, yeah, or because is it like is it free consoles and free games and all that? Because if anybody buys me free games and gives me free shit, I'm definitely gonna say Microsoft is the best system in the world, no oh, matter yeah. what. I mean, I, are I, they giving them cash? Or, I mean, are they? Yeah, them- I'm pretty sure for these bigger networks, is cash deals. The the that's that's rough man that's stupid you know for like you know youtubers and guys like us you know podcasters it's usually and you know it might be podcast but it's usually you know incentives you know uh promos promotional goods or whatever because they can usually it's easier for them in the business world to penny out like a free game or even a console you know because they know that it would have cost much more to pay someone to pro- to produce X results, you know, so it's pretty. I'm pretty sure it's cash for machine them on it, you know. But again, this stuff that happens all the time, so mm. people need to stop making such a big stink about it, you know. Uh, they're just mad because they didn't get some of that money. <laughs> it, it really, they just need to get over it. Really, like you said, it just it's something that if if they're gonna bitch about it, okay, 
And guess what? Xbox is Microsoft's not getting in trouble. Machinima's not getting in trouble. There's nobody's getting in trouble for it. Yeah, They're no saying, one's hey, we're going to give you some. What, 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 what about me giving, you know, okay, say, you know, or here's, here it is right here, Yogi. Horseplay is going to give Knuckleballer Radio and ZombieCast some money to say good shit about them. There's nothing illegal about that. Yeah. Are they pissed off because they didn't decide to say, hey, we're going to do that too? Or they wanted to save a few dollars and Microsoft said, fat, we're not going to save some. We're just going to spend our money because we're going to make billions off of it? Of course. <laughs> because when you get the big, um, and I'm going to bring out uh, a gaming clan, it's uh, Optic. Uh, I know you know who they are. It's a uh, uh, ghost. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's Optic Gaming is what it's called. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you. If they were to get money, you know, it's, it's just how that is, man. It's just how business goes. If you you got to stay up on top of the line. If you don't see, I mean, I'm not ever going to give anybody money to say anything good about horseplay. I don't care. If you like horseplay, <laughs> we love you to listen and watch. If you don't, we appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> that's 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 all it is. That's all it's about, right there. You know, I think some people just they they I'm look at it. Rant. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we. I feel the same way, believe me, brother. But, you know, I think what people do is they look at that and they say, uh, oh, now their credibility is, you know, stands to question because they're selling out. I'm sorry, but no one's going to turn down a paycheck. People, at the end of the day, they got mouths to feed and bills to pay. You know, it's, it ain't that serious. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, moving on. So, uh, in lieu of, uh, you know, continued bugs on Battlefield 4, Players are going to be rewarded free battle packs daily, so long as they play one match. So you play one match. It doesn't. I think it doesn't have to even have to be uh, a full match. No, and it does have to be a full match. It has to be a full match to get their 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 pack. I, I read that too. Interesting, because some people were telling me that they didn't play a full game. Maybe they may have had some bugs when they first rolled it out then. But, I mean, still, you play one match and you get a free battle pack. I guess for some people, maybe better than eating a, a Slim Jim. Though I like Slim Jims. I don't care if they're processed meat, you know. But, uh, you know, hey, EA is finally doing right. And you know, I don't know how involved EA was that because, you know, they're huge. I don't know if that's more of a dice thing. But still, you know, it's, it's nice to see something going right in the EA universe. Of no course, doubt. there is a catch. They, finally. Yeah, finally. There is a catch, though. This, they're only going to be doing this for through February, so if people want to jump on it, they better jump on it now. And I haven't gotten the game yet. I might have to get it just so I can take advantage of, of this promotion. <laughs> just like I said, I get the free battle pass because it's going to suck for the people that join the game after this month when they stop giving out the free stuff. They're going to be so far behind unless they grind like crazy. And essentially, all the people that started on the game early would have to stop playing for a little while or slow down so their new players could catch up that ain't gonna happen yeah as i was saying so it's like you're gonna be like a year and a half behind in terms of how much how much good gear they have see i don't like that kind of stuff sometimes i mean the game still comes down to skill but when you have better weapons and better sights you know it does make a, a significant difference it does because uh, i i was playing battlefield 4 a couple weeks ago and um I was still, you know, I'm, I only played it a couple times. I mean, I got the game, somebody gave it to me, and then they quit playing. I don't know how that works. Um, got on it a couple times, and I really didn't have nobody to play with, and I was stuck with the level one sniper rifle or even gun, and I was could I had to be right on top of somebody to shoot somebody, and that's just, no. no. If I'm going to do that, I might as well just, I'm going to go play Armor 2 anyway. <laughs> you guys are here about that more here in the show. See, uh... Battlefield 3 was like that too, and I, and I love the Battlefield series, but, you know, it was the same way, like, some of the guns, they, they were so inaccurate, and the, the the stopping power was only better if you actually, you know, were close to someone, and shooting them practically point blank, because, like, for that, I'll just stab them. <laughs> yeah, you might, that's, that's all you can do, really. I mean, it's just, some of it's just pointless some of the games that you have to start with and then you have to work your way up so far and then everybody else has got like the best guns in the game or the best 
everything. And same with thing with Day Z, but the thing with Day Z is actually you die, you lose all your shit unless you can get back to your body. That's like that's uh that's like Diablo. Diablo like that too. Uh-huh. Well, at least uh, Diablo two was. I don't know if Diablo three is because I never. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna check on the puppy real quick. You you take the next bit here, Obi. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Obi's illiterate, everybody. So we're gonna try to read this. We're gonna try now. When I say try to read it, it's gonna you know I'm just gonna read it. Uh, rumors have it that day cursive will be removed completely from school curriculums um, nationwide uh, with a with the decade within the decade. Um, when I was in school, elementary school, I I basically we learned three different things. We learned our well, not three different things only, but with with penmanship, you learned your make creating the letters learning how to write them and then you learn put them in the sentence so you actually continued penmanship and then when you were in fifth or sixth grade well actually well, shorter than that now um it was like third grade where we actually started learning how to write in cursive now and i'm going to give the since this is sad news um because kids these days won't learn the basics of how to actually write and actually uh, the basics they really need in life to actually uh, be successful. Uh, writing a check, I mean, you can write in, you can print, I guess. Um, a lot of people look at a check that's printed and go <laughs> and laugh at you. I'm sorry, but it happened because I don't like writing cursive because my penmanship is so sloppy. Uh, so I write neatly in, in print. And well, the, the lady at the gas station was like, this is funny. I was like, what's so funny about it? It's not in cursive. You got a problem <laughs> with that? Well, my attitude, of course. Um, this is years ago. And my attitude, of course, at the time was like, is, is there an issue with my money? You know, she, she just blew up the answer. I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'll go somewhere else. So that's just how I was. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, doing, doing a budget, writing their own names and scripts, um, it's, yeah, everything can be done as you guys see on, on the, on the show here, um, that are watching live. It's all plain text. It's not any cursive. Well, it, I really think people just have to learn cursive. Um, now if they have to do this in a future class, I really don't think it's ever going to die out. Um, because I guarantee teachers are not going to stop writing in cursive. Okay, if you're not, it's not on the curriculum anymore, then teachers need to start, stop writing in cursive, write in text, plain text. Right, Obi? Yogi? Yeah, it's not going to die out, but I think it's something that should be part of the basics at, at, in the school. You know, it's like uh, they're making the kids dumber and lazier each year by not, you know, stimulating their brain enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and it's 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 really, it's... I mean, we're seriously derping the younger generation. I mean, really. I mean, that's just how it... And when I say derping, I mean, basically, we're screwing them. I mean, really, they're not going to... I mean, yes, they're going to be able to do a lot of things, and yes, 90% of what's going on right now is going to electronic. But you still need to learn how to write, man. If you can't write, how are you going to fill out an application for employment? Oh, yeah, that's done online now. Um <laughs> I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna go pro in the cons there because everything can be done online almost. Um, other news: Philip Seymour Hoffman found dead in his Manhattan apartment. The actor was age 46 and died from a drug overdose. That's sad. It's really sad to hear. Is it me or do we do we hear these stories too much in the the entertainment industry? Yeah. Think, yo, yeah. That's, uh, Every, there's not a single decade that passes by when you don't hear something like this. I mean, you got the entertainment industry. I mean, movies, um, the you know singers. They're all you know, of course, rock stars, sex, drug, and rock and roll, right? It feels like it happens every it's, every uh, couple of weeks. You hear something like this. I mean, yeah, literally, or at least once a month, you're hearing a star that you you know you either you idolized or you knew as a kid or whatever, and they're dying from a you know not even as a kid. 
that you just heard about within the last couple of years that's dying from a drug overdose because they got a little change in their pocket. Ooh, I can go get some of that, that stuff. And then they just are stupid. But that's just that's just my opinion, I guess. <laughs> he was, they were saying that uh, the pressure of the lifestyle as an actor was was getting to him. He didn't like all the noise and attention at times. So kind of crazy. He, but you know what? You know, I, 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 to be honest though, I always looked at him and I said, that guy has something off about him. You could tell in people's eyes sometime when you look at them, it's like, there's something off about that guy. Like he's not all, yeah. all there. He's brilliant. A br he was a brilliant actor, but there was something definitely missing there. Mm. So let's see what else we got. So yeah, you know, we're, we're kind of talking about, you know, the movie industry. And here's a good one, a good bit of news. Not so depressing. Captain America Winter Soldier. It looks pretty promising. It does. I, I'm going to watch it. Definitely. Yeah, I haven't seen the trailers completely. But uh, from what I saw so far, it looks it looks good. And um, it's going to have the same dude that played him previously. In Avengers movies and whatever's so and, and the first Captain America movie. I'm wondering how close it's gonna follow the comic. I don't remember the storyline that well, but uh, it hasn't followed the comic since day one, so we're good on that. <laughs> well, in the comic though, I remember basically Captain America gets killed. No, he doesn't get killed, but he gets really fucked up, and that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, so. didn't he get dropped in the ocean or something? Or they thought he was dead. Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier it ultimately is the one that does Captain America in. And then he drops him in the soldier, and then some. Then there's some later on, some, they find his body, and he was preserved by the cold or something. Like he turns. I, I will tell you about it as soon as it comes out, because I'm going to be watching a lot of these movies that come out. Um, hopefully, with my wife if she wants to go. But um, I, I just see these, all these, the, 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 the blah 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 blah. blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, um, all the comic book movies that are coming out, Captain America, the new Spider-Man coming out, the new Transformers movie coming out. Um, oh wait, that's in the next section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, don't jump ahead. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Meanwhile, now you, you know what? Now that you mentioned it, did you like the the Spider-Man reboot? I did. I did. Um, uh, I thought it was a little bit more of a. Um, you're talking about the new one coming out. Well, you know how they they, they rebooted uh, Spider-Man movies, and now it's the Amazing Spider-Man, and they got the that gay dude playing Spider Peter Parker, and they got yeah yeah that's what I'm talking about. I don't and they I got really rid like of the, they got rid of Mary Jane too. It looks like they got rid of the the, uh, the main actors in Transformers too. It's a it's a, it's a new guy. It's uh who is it? Uh, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Mark Wal is, Warburg is yeah I heard that he's gonna be the main the main guy though. Yep. Oh I didn't know he was gonna be the main guy. Ugh. That kind of sucks. I mean, Ugh. um, I don't necessarily re agree with the choices of that being being done. Um, I mean there are always complications with the 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 actor saying hey I want this much money or I'm not available or hey you're just shit out of luck I'm not gonna do it anymore. Um, but I mean it's every movie that's coming out. I mean. The Amazing Spider-Man. It's a different person. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. retarded. Well, you know, it's, um, it is a reboot. The thing I don't like about this actor is that he's got like the really weird facial expressions. Like he looks, I don't know, like when he does his crying face, it, it, it looks like he's crapping his pants. I don't know. There's something yeah, about it. Looks a... like he's constipated as fuck. I know. I, I I saw that too. It was funny. Yeah, like when his crying face made me want to laugh. Like used to be, I'd be the one like trying to hold back the cheer, tear. Like that's a little sad. But I was just he laughing. Was, like, what the hell? You guys that are watching and and not li just listening, I'm doing the crying face right now. And it looks like I need to shit myself. <laughs> yeah. You know. uh, but yeah, other than that, re the reboot of Spider Man was good. Amazing Spider Man. I like the fact that uh that Peter Parker is more of a, a techie, a, a real geek, and he actually built his own web slinger. Cause that's more true to the comics. But, uh, you know, some of the things that they're doing in there, you know, I don't know, it's a little weird. And supposedly the word on the street was that that some some folks were rallying to have Peter Parker portrayed in a more modern frame. 
And instead of having a, a female love interest, a male love interest, instead, I'm like, oh, okay. Really? Come on. Co yeah, calm your horses that's, down. That's not going to ever happen. I don't care what. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to fight that issue. Well, you know. We've already had Brokeback Mountain. We have a bunch of lesbian movies coming out. The, the thing about out. it, you know, see, and, and I agree with that. I don't I mean, have a yeah. problem with that, but they that the original stories were not like that, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine if someone made a, a straight version of Brokeback Mountain and it was an overtly a remake of it. That'd be a slap in the face to the gay community. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, the, these guys, you know, the, the comics, they had a certain style, a certain kind of, you know, mythos to it. Leave it the way it was. Maybe have some creative liberty, but not so much. If you want a gay superhero, hey, go for it. I'll, I might even watch it, but don't change the classics, you know. As, right. Well, as, they're, they're... I don't know. They're trying to, to, and I want to say this very carefully because um, I'm not prejudiced whatsoever. I could care less. I hate everybody equally. But, <laughs> um, but I'm if it, if there's gonna be those kind of movies, I like you said, Yogi. Don't don't change what's going on. If you're gonna follow a a uh, a comic book story, you it's it's okay to go off topic a little bit. But when you're trying to change the whole point of the story and the whole point of the character, no, you can't do that shit. That's just not even, yeah, I don't even want to talk about that. I do want to talk <laughs> about, though, you know Michael Bay is, right? Hell yeah. Yeah? Crazy well, as mofo. Michael Bay, there are two confirmed projects for him right now. The, the big thing coming out right now, the Transformers movie. Huge. I can't wait to see that. And the Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael and their trusted Master Splinter. It's coming back. <laughs> There's another movie coming out. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Actually, it's Ninja Turtles. It's not teenage anymore because they're all grown up, I think. <laughs> Are they about in their, in their, their late teens or 20s? Early yeah, 20s. Supposedly that that they're supposed to be more grown up. I don't know if it was with, uh, with the puns that with the puns that like Michelangelo and you know like Raphael the hothead with the some of the shit that he says in the last movie made me made me not want to let my kid watch it. <laughs> it I don't know about you though. I'm a huge I'm a huge a I'm a huge turtles fan. And turtles originally was pretty hardcore like in the comics back in the days. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever got to comics, but like, remember they, they, they used to be pretty hardcore. I had thousands hardcore. of Teenage Mutant Turtles comics. I had the action figures, I had Master, and I had them all set up to where that you actually had to keep them on the shelf, you know, because you know, you play with them, then they'll decrease in value. You open the package, they've already decreased in value. <laughs> we got Master Splinter. I mean, they're and they're about oh five six inches tall. And you got Master Splinter there. He's all decked out with his staff, ready to kick some ass. Shredder, of course. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty stoked about it. And uh supposedly they're gonna actually have an Asian guy play Splint uh Shredder now. So that's good. <laughs> Finally. Uh, wasn't the last one it was a white guy. Yeah. Shredder was a white guy. Was... <laughs> and then Holy... yo I... well, well no well hold on though. They say <laughs> that the, the with the, the comic Shredder was a white guy that went to China to train. And well, not went to trade. He was a kid, and I don't know. I don't think he was Oriental. I could have sworn he had a Japanese name, at least in the cartoon. I don't remember in the comic, but I could have sworn he had a, a Japanese name. I don't know. Maybe if and... anybody does know that's watching uh, right now live, if you guys do know about it, what's uh, Shredder's origin for the you know what what it was he Oriental? Was he a white guy? Was he you know? If you guys do know, let us know. Um, was he a ginger? Was he a ginger? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, but, but we want to make sure, though. I mean, these are some great movies coming out, but you got to remember that's going to be exaggerated quite a bit on what's going on. What kind of you know? Um, you know the graphics are going to be this, like for Transformers. You know the graphics are going to be there regardless. That's because you know it's going to happen. There's going to be explosions, freaking robots, freaking. 30 story robots fighting and shit. Okay, you know the graphics are going to be there. Well, Michael Bay style is like uh 
I mean, are you a fan of Michael Bay? I find that he's yes. like hit or miss. Like he either he's, he but, makes the best movie in the world or he makes a bomb. Yeah, but I but one thing you know he's gonna do for sure is have some really sexy uh, graphics and special effects. You mm. gotta give him that. But like <laughs> sometimes, like they were actually talking about changing the bandanas, the color of the bandanas for the turtles, and I'm like, no, they each they each had to have different colors. They were talking about having them all wear red, like. That makes no sense because what, what, one of the few things that distinguishes them is the fact that they're wearing different bandanas. Stop it. <laughs> they wear different colors. Well, they kind of sounded different, too. Yeah, I know, but, you know. Because Leonardo's kind of like the, um, you know, the, the calm type and then, you know, kind of like the leader. And then you got Donatello. He's the scientist, so he's talking in his different thing. And you got Raphael. He's a little badass, so he's like, yeah, I don't want to talk to nobody. And then you got Michelangelo. <laughs> You know he's just fucking, you know, going around laughing everywhere. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the all games people what what um Shredder's uh, origins are. But we will come back to that here shortly. More in entertainment though. Adult Swim now wears the crown as the number one designated for male prime time TV viewers age of 18 to 49. Woot. I haven't watched Adult Swim in like four years. <laughs> the last time I watched Adult Swim was when Beavis and Butthead came on it. That's it. Four yeah. years ago. We're about right when it started, I think. If I still watch TV and still had cable subscription, I'd, I'd be watching Adults, Adult, Adult Swim. I can't lie. I'd be in that 18 to 49 demographic for sure. Right. And, um, and of course, so Cartoon Network is adding another hour of Adult Swim for those that do would like to check it out. And it's that's basically strictly to attract more viewers, of course, right? Yep. <laughs> they're I saying right on a drink, too. That's, yeah. Well, they're, say, they're saying in here that Shredder's an alien. Shredder's an alien. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's going to be a question we're going to ask. Every guest when they come on, that's I want you to put that in the show notes. Every guest when they get asked, this is going to be in their welcome package, okay? Is going to be the question Is Shredder human? <laughs> because yeah. we have, or, or, or a question like, Is, uh, is Shredder, um, what, what origin or what, um, what word am I looking for? What yeah? What's his origin? I mean, so is that would that be a good? Uh, what's uh, where's he from? Basically? Well, yeah. What what are, what, are, what, are, what is what are what is Shredder's, Shredder's origin? His race? Yeah. No, I don't want to be. Like or what that. are or what are think. what are his origins? That's a nice way of saying like you know. Okay, so to every guest that possibly comes on in the future, your question is going to be, "What is Shredder's origin? What do you think?" <laughs> and I'm going to pull all these answers together, and I might just put a poll up sometime. Hey, we can do that on, on our new website. Oh, exactly. I'll put it. We'll put it up there. We're gonna ask the first question, and we'll hey, we'll just make it official right now. The first question on the website when you guys do join, when you guys do get it, when we get it launched, is going to be, "What is Shredder's origin?" Yeah, you're gonna have to remind me to put that poll up there. Yeah. <laughs> It won't be for a little bit yet, though, guys. But we're still gonna ask anyway. Um, if 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 anybody, uh, of course, those that are listening as well, they can't Google uh, it though. They can't. They cannot Google it. That'd be cheating. You know, people are going to. So this, I've already Googled it, man. Our honor um, system. <laughs> um, but it's it's something that uh, if you guys have an a, an idea, all you guys guys got to do is um, basically leave a comment. Um, I will make a little short video of this segment right here, um, and leave just leave a comment uh, either in in Stitcher there, or or here I guess here there somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> We're all over the place. All right, getting back to obligatory news. Oh yeah, so so the big thing about this though is that I think Turner Broadcasting is now one of the. Like, they're really becoming very big now, like, amongst all the networks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're getting those advertising dollars. What's even more interesting is that they're, 
that now Adult Swim outranks like all the late night shows. And you know how much money they they pump at those guys. Like some of those guys are making millions upon millions of dollars a year for being on late night. By the way, that's just what they do, though. I mean, that's how they make their money. Yeah, all night. But you know, it's kind of funny when we're you know when we're growing up, you know, it's always been it's been like this for a long time. But now it's like in the past maybe ten years, five years, late night television is becoming more respected. Like late night used to be like where all the crappy stuff would be thrown in. Because they couldn't get into the prime time slots, you know, so they, they just throw you let in. them get into the prime time. Slot. Yeah, exactly. So they say, "We'll put you here at midnight when no one really cares," you know. But they now it's be... yeah. What's that? It's, they're either in bed or if it's on the weekend, they're still at the bar. Well, yeah. I wonder. I wonder if now maybe it's because the coach is changing and people are staying up later. That might be part of it. This is kind of interesting. But yeah, by the way, uh, by the way. You, you know, speaking of late night, you know, another thing I forgot to, you know, mention here in our notes, Jay Leno, his last show, I think, is coming up. Next week. Oh, so you, yeah, you know what's up, man. There you go. See, I don't watch TV like that, but I heard about them. They I go, oh, either. wow. I saw it on my Facebook earlier. <laughs> do you know? <laughs> you cheated. Do you know, you know, do you know who's supposed to be replacing him? Okay, I know Jimmy Kimmel already to, to replace one of the guys. Uh, um, man. Well... From, I've heard speculations. Oh, is it the guy from SNL? Ars- Arsenio? <laughs> yeah. Arsenio Hall, really? Yeah, that's the last speculation. Um, uh, Jesus. When Jay Leno does retire and actually leaves, like he said he was going to do 10 years ago. Um, speculated now. This is pure <laughs> speculation. Um, a lot of people are saying on men forums and whatnot that our senior hall is actually going to take the spot. Is the senior hall still even cool? <laughs> I watched the all senior uh, uh, <laughs> our senior hall show the other night, and now oh, he is dry. Whoa, he done lost a lot of his flair. Yeah, see, that's the thing. He was he just doesn't, like he doesn't even do this anymore. Yeah. What? Come on. Oh, man, but you know what? He'll still stay on the air because. He's black. <laughs> I'm just saying. Make sense. Keep going as we're moving along. No, it's not a bad thing. I'm just, I'm just saying. Black people are very loyal to their own peeps. Look, it's like me. I'm Puerto Rican. If it's a crappy Puerto Rican show, and it, and we know the guy's a Puerto Rican host, we'll support it, even though he's crap. crap it's, he's crappy. You know, we'll deep down ourselves. We'll be like, man, this guy's terrible. But he's Puerto Rican. We gotta support him. This is so you 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 white obese so you don't understand the minority card. When we have minorities, you know our fellow peoples, we gotta support okay. them. Okay, okay, hold on here. Yes, I'm white. I am the minority in America now. So you <laughs> shush. I know how it feels. Well, that's true, actually. Come on. <laughs> And I'm not being mean to nobody. That come I on, have to give you crap. I have to give you crap, bro. Cause you're trying to throw me out. You're like, oh, Yogi says to be bad. I'm not even gonna touch it. I'm gonna leave my. I'm gonna throw him to the dogs. I'm like, I was trying to be offensive. I'm just being real. You know, minorities. Like I don't know the minority problem. I am the minority now. But see, white people are as as clickish. Like all my white friends, they like they're like, oh yeah, he's white guy, whatever. It's like it's weird. It's 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 a weird dynamic, dude. It's, it's because now, and I'm gonna I'm and, and and I'm just gonna say this, and I'm gonna say it again. Uh, neither of us are prejudiced. Neither of us, nothing. We're yeah, not but like not, by no means. But when you come down to you have, I'm just gonna use it: a white host and a black host. Um, the black host is gonna get far much more support from the audience, and from, I want to say, the little people, okay? Uh, people like us, people that watch them every night, people that watch the show every night or every day. Um, and it depends on how big you are on the scene anyway. Like with uh, The Morning Chew, uh, my wife watches that with her grandma every morning, and Whoopi Goldberg's on there. Well, the other there's another black lady on there. Uh, it's not what it's basically who you are, too. Um, Jay Leno, this is another prime example. He's going to be followed. He's already followed. He doesn't need a big following from fans. He's got all the rich people. He's already rich as hell anyway. 
Yeah. He's he, got all the he's he's on the rich side, the the rich, you know, the which rich white person spectrum. Okay? <laughs> um and it's not saying nothing about it because and I'm going to be honest, but when Arsenio Hall had his show was it about 8 years ago? When he started his show and it was first on the air, it was Wait, after uh, coming to America and it was, you know, he was starting his late night career. Okay. I watch that show every night. I don't care. It doesn't matter if you're white or black. If you're entertaining, now I wouldn't throw a stick at him because uh, <laughs> he's dry. He's boring to me. Opti, um, Opti in the chat is giving us a hard time because the Dice Awards are on. It's like, yeah, mainstream awards for stuff we don't really care about. Pass. <laughs> Dice. <laughs> Roll them. We're, 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 too, we're, we're too much of bitter old men to care about mainstream stuff. Meh. Yeah. Mainstream, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Ten years on with the news there, yo. Oh, my God. <laughs> he said, where's Norma? She, she'll probably join us again next week. <laughs> yeah, we, we need a, th a third female host. We need some, some uh, sex appeal and make it less of a sec uh, sausage fest. I think that works. It's not the point of being a sausage. That's not the whole point behind horseplay. <laughs> I know. I'm just messing with you, bro. But, you know, um, yeah, Senior Hall, like, he, he was big in the 90s, and then he mm -hmm. disappeared for a while. I mean, he was gone for off the scene. I mean, you didn't hear anything about him. At least I didn't hear anything about him for, like, at least, it felt like a decade. Mm -hmm. And then he came back out of nowhere. I was like, okay, I remember him. And it, it seemed like he had the same energy. Like, his life force was suck dry. <laughs> That sucks. But, you know, it happens. Old age, man. <laughs> but, yo, back, back, to the, back to the Cartoon Network thing. Um, so, yeah, Fox has their own kind of answer to Adult Swim. It's called ADHD. I haven't checked this out personally, but it's supposedly they have, like, their own edgy cartoons. So, interesting. Interesting stuff. All right, moving on to the next piece of news here. This is a pretty big one. And I think uh, Obi will appreciate this as much as I, I do. So the marketplace in Stitcher reports that Sony is selling off their Vio brand and product line, expecting one billion dollars in losses. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm gonna try not to be a fanboy here. Sticking with the news. Sticking with the news. So what's interesting is with the yen on a steady decline. You would think that, you know, macroeconomics, you know, the global marketplace would be enough to keep Sony competitive. You know, they have Sony Pictures and a bunch of other brands that have a strong presence in the U.S. and in other markets in Europe. Um, and that, they make more than enough money with those things. Like, those divisions are not hurting. But the consumer electronics division is, like, such dead weight that they cannot keep carrying it so it looks like they're gonna just shed the the vio brand and get rid of the the computer the whole computer aspect so it just puts it into perspective we were just talking about this obi that you know sony has been close to bankruptcy you know a lot of sony fanboys are like playstation all the way you know that's great that they have such rabid fans but you know they've been teeter-tottering they've been you know on the point of, of of hitting bankruptcy and you know as far as that division goes and giving up on uh playstation mm -hmm. It puts well, things gotta, in perspective. With, with Sony, it's not just the, you know, oh, Sony all the way. Um, it's a lot of the things with Sony, it's it's all dedicated fans, uh, dedicated users. That's been Sony PlayStation 1 all the way to PS4. Yeah. Will not touch an Xbox. Um, but, I mean, you, a lot of people have to realize that it's not just not just the systems that they're coming out with. You have to look at the company. Okay, if you're falling in love with this PlayStation, okay, and Xbox goes out and puts out an Xbox 2, whatever, do you really think, I mean, and this is a question for you, Yogi, do you honestly think that Sony's going to be able to keep up with Xbox? They haven't been. As they far can't. as their, their online infrastructure, they're still behind, you know. Nintendo is catching up to, to Sony. Come on, man. <laughs> well, that's sad. I mean, you got Nintendo <laughs> Wii, and then you got Wii U now. Dude, I take a lot of back what I said about Wii U. Um, Wii U is actually a viable... I mean, a lot of the games on it, it's not a lot of multiplayer-type 
MMORPG stuff. But for the family type system, the Wii is the way to go. Um, just because it's the way to go. There are so many things that you can do with the, the the little screens and everything. It's just a whole new Wii experience. Yeah. The thing is, you know, yeah, we'll get it on that at a different topic. Yeah. I mean, what I was we'll say on that side, Nintendo just needs to really take advantage of their hardware and and really get you know third parties to create software that fully takes advantage of all these accessories so you know if, if it, they can't make it something where it's tacked on like they have the tablet controller if they can fully take advantage of that then they're good because that's their strength you know they're going to be behind as far as the actual raw power the performance but they have those they, the, that, that technology they have lets them open up some possibilities for some really cool mechanics and you know, they could still do it. I mean, they did it with the GameCube. They had the, the second screen experience. It's not a new thing, but, you know, they never quite got it right. So they, they still have a chance to do it right. But, um, you know, the interesting thing about this news with Sony is that some say that, you know, Sony is experiencing the same problem Microsoft uh, has gone through and is going through. Mm -hmm. Microsoft is nowhere, nowhere near in the same kind of situation as Sony, first of all. And 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 the business analysts analysts crack me up because they saw, they must they must have Apple must have them in their back pockets or something, because they're saying oh you know Sony and Microsoft have to keep pace with Apple and Samsung, uh no, maybe in consumer electronics as far as like tablets and whatnot, uh you know phones I can see that, but um it's a whole different thing I mean overall in electronics uh, Microsoft is still in a good position. And Apple's actually on a decline in themselves, you know. Uh, ever since losing jobs, it's not the same. They're not the same company. And people could tell they, they've lost some of that spirit. And they're not going to find someone to replace them anytime soon. Someone that's eccentric and kind of like a mad scientist. <laughs> but anyway. They have to find somebody soon because if they don't, they're going to be in trouble. Yeah. The, maybe even a delusional fan fanboys will eventually catch on. Like, hey, something's amiss. This is not the same company anymore. Why am I paying ten times more for the same thing that I could get from blah blah blah? You know, it's kind of like Apple's like the Lexus of computers. That's all I'm gonna say. You pay for that little logo <laughs> right. and the extra cup holder. So anyway, an hour. That, we're actually at the end of the news. We'll be ready. The, la the next. That's a lot of news. It is. We the next cut our news down by half. <laughs> well, we don't have too much more in this episode. This is... we, no, it, it's okay. We just we we and you talk too damn much. That's all it is. <laughs> we free bought early, so uh, the last free, thing yeah, here free balling is at the end of the show. <laughs> so uh, the next final bit of news, I think there's been some issues with iTunes, and this is not this is more speculation than firm news, but I think iTunes has been having some issues. We tried submitting our podcast in there, and it was giving us some errors. And a lot of people apparently are getting the same issue. And it has something to do with the servers or whatever, but I, I did not see any response from Apple in any case. And when it did respond, it was like a generic, have you tried rebooting? <laughs> kind of stupid stuff like that. Like, um, mm -hmm. No, that, that would not affect this issue. So, I, you know, I, I have a, a weird feeling that Apple might be changing their revenue model that maybe they might make podcasts into a paid service if you want to submit your show. Uh, I don't know. I have, I have a sinking feeling there. Well, we won't be on iPod, iTunes, then will we? Yeah, I, I mean, I won't miss it, but... <laughs> iHeartRadio for the win. <laughs> yeah. That's the next step. We might We're talk about that later. Radio already, guys. We, you don't care. <laughs> Shout out to Mad Dog, by the way. Anyway, so I guess uh, to keep things moving along, we'll skip this next section here. And uh, just some quick updates. Uh, blah, 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 what are we doing? So yeah, we, were talking, we, we, we mentioned it before. Blah, blah, blah. Nintendo's volatile situation, right? You, you actually just kind of touched upon it again. And um, to add, further you know, kind of cement the whole scenario they're in, they reported a 6.9% drop in operational profit. And this is the third consecutive quarter of losses. So we just wanted to kind of reinforce what we were saying before. That it's a lot more serious than some people really really realize. Um, and 
basically Nintendo has admitted defeat like this, and hey, this fiscal year is going to end in a net, net loss. Now, they've been here before, but this is the, the biggest uh, deficit that they've had thus far. So, you know, it's, I'm wondering if they're going to really capitalize on their handheld uh, gaming. And I think I really think they should consider uh, mobile platforms, but, you know, it's dubious that, you know, they're going to go that route. And the last, and I, last but not neat. I did, no, well, well wait. <clears throat> I did read um, on the with, thing with Nintendo. I was reading some forums, and some, I read forums all the damn time. Um, but I was reading some forums and checking out some other stuff. And Nintendo is thinking, is actually seriously thinking about going into the mobile platform with apps and, 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 and phone apps and phone games as well. So that will be really exciting because then that's just yeah. a whole new market that they can actually tap a little bit of money out of uh, just to not stay afloat because Nintendo is working. But um, but just to add more revenue so they can actually decide if they want to actually expand or make their, their boxes a little bit more better for the 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 first-person shooter gamer type yeah uh, such as xbox and playstation 4 is yeah well you know what I, you gotta i gotta hand it to them i mean the the fact that they are at least entertaining the idea because nintendo's always been like a more conservative stubborn kind of company so the fact that they're even entertaining that idea and talking about it openly that's that's a right step in, in a good direction but uh last but not least another quick update Dota 2 has a new Bloom Festival, and it celebrates two new heroes, two new game modes, uh, gameplay 6.8 update, so they're already up to, like, their sixth iteration of the game, essentially, and mm-hmm. that doesn't count all the other versions that were in the closed beta, which there were quite a few. Um, they have dozens of new items, new features, and tons more. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about it, and I'm going to try to play tons of it this week and report back with some real first-hand impressions of it. Uh, we did talk about the random uh, hero mode, random ability mode last week. So I kind of want to just touch upon that again. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, Obi, what we got next? We got a little quickie. A little quickie. But no, but no you know, girl. When you, say, when you guys say to your woman, you'll be like, hey, let's have a little quickie. <laughs> it's not that kind of little quickie. Yeah, yeah we, got, we got a woman here to enjoy that with. <laughs> Super ad bowl. If you guys watch the Super Bowl um, and you guys watch the commercials, well, you watch the ads. Now, uh, the only thing, that, the only word, and Yogi's got it perfect right here, is uh, everything. It's just what a slaughter. Uh, it's just, it was almost, some of them were just so funny I couldn't even sit in my seat. But some of them were just like basically bad attempts at a bad commercial. <laughs> um, I think most of the people were more excited about the the commercials than the game itself, especially after halftime. Um, uh, here's something for you. I was watching um, the uh, hmm, uh, I think it was the North American uh, Challenger League stream, and they said to, uh, we'll be right back, especially if you want to see a game that's not over at halftime. Thanks for watching. I was like, oh, my God, I just could not stop laughing. <laughs> um, and, no, it was the LCS, actually. It was live, and it was just so funny. They couldn't, I mean, it was because it was over at halftime. There was no way Broncos were coming back. And <laughs> might I, I do want to say this now. The I heard about this tonight. The, the people in, and you guys know all the betting scene, of course, Vegas is the headquarters of, you know, the betting scene for all sports. Well, if you guys think about it, what was probably done, okay, in Vegas? Usually they have what's the first score going to be, you know, you can say, oh, it's going to be 3-0, or the first score is going to be a, uh, a a field goal or a touchdown. It's basically, you know, 50-50 or basically 33%. You know how much money was actually lost? <laughs> And how much money was actually won yeah. for that since it was the first score of the game was a safety? Yeah. <laughs> Millions. I saw it today. Uh, I checked it out on my phone when I was when I heard the news, and it was $6.3 million lost because there's a lot of – exactly. There's a lot of people on 
that said, you know, it's going to be a football. It's going to be a touchdown. It's going to be seven points or it's going to be or six points or whatever it is. But it's going to be, you know, and then a bunch more people are like, it's going to be a field goal. Well, that the few people that say, well, we're going to take the odds. We're going to lay down this much and we're going to say, okay, it's going to be a safety. Those people won over six million dollars. Come on. For yeah. a long shot. That's like going to the track and saying, hey, this is a really, really crappy horse, but we're going to bet on you, buddy. <laughs> well, supposedly, uh, a lot of the bookies were expecting like a three point spread. So, that, uh, <laughs> yeah. That, what, that kid wasn't, I don't think, was it ever close by that much? No. <laughs> how much, now, my question to you is do you know how much? A thirty-second commercial during the Super Bowl was. Oh, I don't even want to think about that figure. Well, no, I want to, I want to tell people because it's a huge number, and and it's I think, um, and I'm just gonna do it real quick. Average price of a Super Bowl ad, and I'm not saying Super Bowl ad, and I don't think of it like that. But uh, I was supposed to say Super Ad Bowl, wouldn't I? Yeah, cause we're not properly licensed. We don't want to come oh, after no. us. We're not. We're not televising <laughs> the Super Bowl. We're talking about how bad it sucked ass. <laughs> There's nothing about. Well, we're watch this, watch this, and hey, make sure you see us. No, I'm gonna tell you right now. Super Bowl sucked. It was a blowout. It was boring as hell. And yeah, you want me to pay I'm me? glad I did not watch it. I just uh, caught highlights and heard about it from other people. Yeah. Well, the team I'm, I was rooting for once, so that's cool. Yeah, the team I was rooting for because it was the other team my dad and Missy didn't want to win. So my wife is a Peyton Manning. <laughs> you know, that's her future ex-husband, okay? Yeah, yeah. After I die. Which, you know, I might be dead next week, you know. But anyway... Well. You know, you know, it's a conspiracy. Uh, Eli set that all up because he didn't want his brother to get any more rings. He didn't want it to have more rings than him. Exactly. He already <laughs> does, doesn't he? Doesn't, doesn't, uh, oh, they both got two. Never mind. Yeah. I still, did, dude, the funniest commercial that I did see, though, is the, the horse with the, the puppy. I didn't catch that many of them, but I did like the Radio Shack commercial. Basically, this is what happened in a, in, a, in, a, in a shot for those that are usually listening and didn't watch it as well. So, kind of like my uh, my geek partner over there uh, didn't watch the Super Bowl. Um, basically, you know, you guys know the Clydesdales for Budweiser, and um, they're in a pen, and all of a sudden, this little puppy is brought to the farm, okay, or born at the farm, and this little puppy makes, I mean, just best friends with one of the horses. Well, the puppy's given away. And the puppy's like, screw that, I'm going back to my best friend. He runs all the way back home. Okay, well now, this is the funniest part. The puppy gets put into a, uh, like a vehicle saying because he's actually going to be sent to another new home. And then the horse, his best friend, was following him down the road. And then all of a sudden, the, 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 the vehicle stopped, and then the, paint, the camera panned, and then all of a sudden you got eight Clydesdales standing in front of the house, or standing in front of the car. It was funny, and then all of a sudden you see the dog and, you know, all the Clydesdales running back up to the house, and the guy's like, oh, my God, really? Best <laughs> friends for life. Uh, it was, it's funny. That's cool. But that, that's, that's my favorite, you know, my favorite commercial. And you didn't even watch it, so you really can't even join in on this. For those that are watching, <laughs> you guys well, did watch the Super Bowl. Tell us your favorite commercial that you did like. I watched a bunch of commercials on YouTube after the fact for pretty much us. <laughs> well, what was your favorite one that you saw? The, the, the Radio Shack one where the 80s attacked or the 90s. Oh, yeah. It was, it was 80s, 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 yeah. I just wanted the Radio Shack back. Yeah. Just took it apart. <laughs> it was funny, too, because people were, like, uh, joking around, like, man, how did Radio Shack come up with the money to pay for this if they're about to go belly up? It's like, no, I don't think they are. Because you know what? There's always going to be made for a radio shock. I'll tell you why. Because people are stupid. People will break things and they need parts all the time. And Radio Shack is great for getting parts. They and... better be careful because um, 
Walmart stays open 24 seven, starting to carry everything they do. Um, um, even the, even the local grocery store has having electronics. Part. Yeah, but Radio Shack has a lot of specialized stuff. Like they have a lot of bits. They have a lot of, of Radio bits. Shack specialized stuff. The things that say Radio Shack on it. That's it. Mm. Basically, any routers or anything like that, cables or anything like for my mic, I can go to Walmart and get them. Yeah, but see, Radio Shack will have like really random stuff, like an, an O ring for for a certain a certain size O ring for something, or a, a splitter. Like you know, like you know, they they're good for that kind of stuff. You know, Walmart. They're always gonna have any. Hey, listen, we should no, do a Walmart's lot. Walmart's of... not paying us, by the way, just to plug this. It's not. I mean, we do a lot of. I just do. We practically live in Walmart. I'm just saying that Radio Shack is always gonna ha- kind of have its place. It's a little niche. I, hear you. I don't see them going anywhere. I hear you. But uh. Yeah, see, Super Apple, man, you know, all of it is, it's a marketer's wet dream. It's not, it's not about football anymore. That's why I wasn't even excited about watching the game this year. Like, I caught it last year, but this year I was kind of like, eh, I didn't feel motivated. But, you know, I was, the one thing I was curious about was, what if the ads are any good? <laughs> I feel that's what it comes down to, really. But, you know, you know, this is the funny thing. That, and, and tell me what you think, if you agree with this, Obi. But... I think what's interesting is that they spend multi million millions upon millions of dollars, let's just say. You mm-hmm. know, whether it's hundreds of millions or whatever or more on on these on these uh ad spots, right? And some of them run multiple ads. Like they have a whole series, like a short film broken up into parts, right? Mm-hmm. And it's always for stuff that the average person will have no interest in or for stuff that we already love. So it's like, why are you trying to convince me to get something that I already love? It's like Budweiser. It's like, I'm already drinking a Bud. Thank you. I'm, I don't, you don't need to convince me to drink it. It's like, it's like having, they, they do stupid stuff like a commercial about getting laid. It's like, man, sex is great. Yeah, thanks for reminding me that it's great. It's like, <laughs> you just paid to remind me that I already, about something that I already knew. Like, I, like, I don't get it, the mentality. It's stupid. You know, I, I mean. Right. You know, that's me joking, but marketers do that because they have this thing where they want to empower the consumer so they don't regret their decision and they keep making the same decisions. So it's like they they pay for retention. Not even it's not even to pay to get new customers. It's pay to keep the ones they already have. It's like you made the right choice. You are a cool dude. You know, I I still find it funny though. I don't know. What do you think? That's just dude. With with everything that that it's it's come back down to what we were talking about earlier. Um, if if businesses have and and they pay they pay dearly. Uh, I didn't find out an exact price, but it's millions of dollars. Okay, um, to or at least a million to do a thirty second commercial during the Super Bowl, if not more. I heard at one point three point six, um, but it's uh, if. Really, I mean, if I'm going to be growing a business and I'm going to be starting a business, and if I have, I'm going to have, you know, Yogi as well as anybody. You got to have your everything set up. You got to have your marketing plan. You got to have everything you do. And if to that company, if $1.6 million is, or $2 million is their marketing budget for the year, is it worth it to save that money for the Super Bowl? Yes, because there's over over 111 million watch the Super Bowl this year. That yep. right there alone is just astronomical. There's nothing you can. I mean, there's not really too much I can say more about it because I mean, you really covered everything. Though most people are probably taking a a bio break during the commercials. <laughs> then again, with the way that game was, they probably left for the game to do whatever they wanted, and then came back for the commercials. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, baby, the commercials are on. Ooh, I better hurry up and get back in there. Oh That's man, it it's great. That's just how it is. It's all good. Super Bowl is Super Bowl, um, and and like we said before, it's not really too much about the game, even especially about how the score turned out. It's more about what is the funniest ad on the Super Bowl. I really thought the funniest ad on the Super Bowl was the one with the bull, the you know most eligible bachelor, and then that song came up. And then there's like, um, you sex the thing, and there's two cows, and he looks at the calves or that the 
at the cows and the bulls like licking his nose and the other calves like, mm, yeah, you're sexy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you well, you know, have to watch it. You know, <laughs> they, they still got they got the uh, ads up for vote still on YouTube. So you can vote for which one you like the best. Oh, uh, I did. I, I voted already. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check them all. I, I skipped through past through some of them because I had to do some stuff, but I, I definitely like the Radio Shack one. I thought that was really clever. It took me back. But uh, oh yeah. Anyway, moving on. What, you, what we else are we got? going to get into? We are going to take a short thirty second break. We are going to be right back with the dust off. We'll be right back. When welcome back, this is the dust off. Dust it off, Yogi. What do you got for this this week? <laughs> I don't so, I have mean, many because I haven't done yeah, anything. Yeah, so we're going to blaze through this. Not, not too many video games, but we're going we're gonna to switch it up a little bit and talk about some other stuff we dusted off besides video games. But right. I did uh, start to look at Loadout, which one of our followers uh, recommended. It's an interesting first-person shooter type game. Uh, th- that you customize a weapon. I-, I just really quickly looked at it, and I was like, "Oh, this looks. P- it has some potential." So I might just check that out and, uh, s- and really report back on that. Uh, play some League of Legends. Um, a lot of mobile games: Doctor Who Legacy, Marvel Puzzle Quest, Final Fantasy Airborne Brigade, Fantastica, Rage of Bahamut, and that's pretty much it. And then I touched a little bit of Armada Online, Hearthstone, and Guardian Heroes, um, and oh yeah, and Dota too. So, not a huge week for gaming, you know, a lot of quick sessions, but uh, I did I, I did get some recommendations for a new game that came on uh, Steam. It was a, a mobile game that turned to a Steam game called Echo Prime. It's a, supposedly it's an RPG that you could play in really short sessions and be very satisfied in it. Like, you play three, five minute sessions and have fun with it and come back to it anytime you want, like pick up and play kind of style. Um, and there's another one called Plague Incorporated, which is a mobile game. I think it's iPad only. It might be Android too. I don't remember. But uh, the premise of this game is you have to de- de- design uh, diseases that uh, spread fast and are unstoppable. So it's kind of interesting. Like, let me create herpes. And I'm going to give you the gift that keeps on giving. Ha ha! <laughs> That's fine. I'm sorry, dude. I can't. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh too hard. I'm trying to hurry up and reach, reach my mute mic button, but I can't hit it time so i just start laughing i don't care <laughs> i think it's a cool concept though like you'd be diabolical but uh it, it was it was funny i just, just stopped <laughs> laughing sorry <laughs> wow oh man but uh so that, that, that looks like fun you know what i like those kind of games where you get to be the bad guy sometimes like dungeon keeper dungeon keeper the whole mm-hmm. premise of that game was um building like uh, um evil layers and and, and and beating up heroes, you know, and you create torture chambers and, and slap them up and stuff, and you'd slap your own minions around to build things faster, and uh, War of the Overworld came out, and it's going to take take uh, the place of that, and I just look, I like I like when you get to be the bad guy, it's like, hmm, I'm going to create a disease, why not? <laughs> but, uh... Definitely. Well, um, some of the games that I've <clears throat> kind of dusted off a little bit this week, um, I haven't really dusted off anything uh, too much. I mean, I've, I've got into playing a little bit of League of Legends. Um, I jumped back on WoW for a few minutes, literally a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. Um, and then, uh, of course, been playing some Hearthstone. And the other person, and I want to put this out right now, is um, Fifi. You know Fifi, and she, uh, most people know her as uh, my wife. She has been playing Hearthstone. 
Now, this is a serious moment. She has been playing her stone almost every day. Now, she's getting um, really, really good. So, therefore, here soon, we are going to have um, a little something that we're actually probably going to feature right here on Horseplay. Can you beat Fifi in Hearthstone? If you guys do have Hearthstone's account, we'll get that up in a, in a, in a future episode, though. But um, uh, I have been playing one game in particular a lot. Um, if you guys look down right below me, I have been playing its Arma 2 and, um, and the 21st Ranger Regiment. Um, if you guys do want to find out a little bit more about that, just go right there to 21st Army Rangers dot engine dot com forward slash recruiting and talk to anybody you'd like if you uh it's a realism clan so um and i've, I've been i've been enjoying it so um but uh basically that's i mean and i've been playing a little bit every now and then i've been playing a little bit of war thunder still um but that's really it yoga i mean i really haven't been doing much because i've been so excited about this this stitcher that, uh, with us on stitcher now i'm just I want to make sure everything's right. You know, I want to make sure everything is good. I got some more overlays in the works. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm dusting off GIMP. How's that? It's not yeah. really a game, but I dumped, I dusted off GIMP for a little while to make, try to make some more. Hey, yeah, and I just like, go ahead. Yeah, I dusted off a lot of software too, but uh, not related to video games. I did dust off a lot of anime. You mm -hmm. know, because I've just been so beat. At the end of the day, I just like kind of laid down as I'm going to sleep. I'll catch up on some episodes. And uh, I've watched Hunter x Hunter, Sword Art Online, caught up on some One Piece. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna probably post some uh, some uh, rev mini reviews and impressions over at uh, Dual Pass Online, and uh, on our, our, our new website, Geeky Antics, the network site. And I also finally caught up with The Walking Dead, so I'm ready for the new season, the second half of season four to start. That was a marathon session, so trust me, I was where you're at right now, Obi. I, I was there already, catching up on Doctor Who. And all I got to say for the Doctor Who fans out there, Season 7, Episode 5, wow, it made me love this series, but it also made me cry inside. I had to hold back the heel. I turned to a little bitch, I can't lie. That, <laughs> that was a sad episode. I was like, whoa. It was epic, but it was like, ah. Uh, that's all I'm like. I, I can't say anything more than that without the support, without, uh, you know, uh, totally killing it for you. But you know what? Like I told, like I told Normie last week, Obi, I'm gonna get you into anime. I'm gonna, I'm gonna post a crash course. I'm gonna create a little crash course, like a little guide, a handbook, and I'm gonna. I only watch anime porn. That so everybody watches that. None of the count. That's just, you know, that doesn't count. Everybody watches that. I really don't, but it was sounded like the right thing to say at the time. Ah. <laughs> uh, one day I'm gonna I'm gonna find the one that you'll like and then you'll be hooked. Once you find the one that you like, that's it. Oh, I've I've done my share. I've I've watched my share of anime. Um, uh, I guess on the other side of the spectrum with non-gaming stuff, I do watch quite a bit of shows during the week. I do watch uh, Arrow. If you guys know what that is, and um, oh yeah, <clears throat> of course NCIS and NCIS LA. Uh, is a show that we love to watch. Yay, Sleepy Abby. Hollow. Yay, Abby, Sleep. Abby, Abby. Yeah. Yeah. My, my son's a Gibbs. My my son's a Gibbs fan. Yeah, Gibbs is um, awesome. Uh, Sleepy Hollow is another one that um, they just can't get away from. It's just see, that's if funny. You uh, if you haven't seen Sleepy Hollow, man? The the show. You gotta watch it. It's all about it's about Sleepy Hollow. It's about the Four Horsemen. It's about the apocalypse. It's 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 <laughs> fucking sweet. How far along um, is that? Because uh, two seasons, season two. My wife said she didn't like it. I said you have to give it a shot. It looks like it's pretty badass. So it's still it running. Is. Well, yeah, and you and you gotta you gotta keep your mind open. You can't just watch this show with a closed mind, saying it's either gonna be good or not. It's good. There are some parts that are slow and that that have to catch up to certain parts, but everything. So it takes a while like, to build up. It it does. You gotta you gotta. That's probably why. Um, a couple more shows that we do like to watch together. Um, me and my wife do. Are, uh, man, the Goldbergs. Now, if you, there's a, a the wrestlers. Guy, no, the Goldbergs. <laughs> um, and it's a family of back in this the 80s, 
And uh, he videotaped, this guy videotaped his whole childhood of what happened. Well, then they made it into a show. It's actually a guy, he videotaped everything, and they got real footage at the end. It's, it's a really good show. Um, we laugh our butts off every time we watch it. But that's really about it. I mean, I don't really, I watch plenty of TV. Um, and, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm a geek. That's fine. I, I watch wrestling, of course, WWE, <laughs> Monday nights, Friday nights. Um, How do you feel about it, uh, C- CM Punk leaving? See ya. You complain too much. Anyway, but it's it's something that uh, <laughs> he does. He complains about everything, man. You know what? I like, never liked him. I always like, thought he was a punk. Ah, just, just like his name. Just like Randy Orton. Okay, I'm sorry to say it. Um, we're not going to get on this subject, but I basically I watch it. I don't watch it for the wrestling matches. I watch it to watch the girls wrestle, and I watch it to <laughs> look, listen to the drama. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If if drama, if I can hear drama that's not mine, I don't have to deal with it. It's funnier than crap. Yeah, it's so. Funny. And it makes you feel better about your own problem. It's like, ah, oh, all right, cool. <laughs> not so bad. Well, some of the and some of the personas that they come along, you know, <clears throat> with uh. Anyway, we'll get out. That that can be a whole different show. Uh, <laughs> and we get a lot of fans out there that are wrestling fans. So, I mean, a, lot of, a lot of friends out there like like wrestling. You know, they, they basically. Wrestling is the 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 male equivalent of soap operas. Though there's some women that like it too, but it's our soap opera. That's what it is. That's what it boils down to. Hey, that's how it is. If they don't like it, then bye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Peace. But we do have another quickie, and we're just gonna do a quickie. It's not really a quickie because it's part of the actual title of the show, so it can't be too quick. Well, that was originally a feature, but I know that we're, we're running kind of long, so, you know. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're all right. The other quickie uh, was slash feature, the Valentine's Day Conspiracy. What are, you, what are you thinking about this, Yogi? I really didn't put much thought into it. I know that what I'm getting my wife for Valentine's Day um, – and she's getting me something totally not Valentine's Day related. She's getting me some computer so hardware. <laughs> so well, that's sexy. I, I want some rudder pedals for the for the game I play. And she's like, "Okay, order them. There's your Valentine's Day gift." Sweet. She just doesn't know what I'm getting her though. So. <laughs> See, I just you I'm know not, we... I can't say it right now either because she's probably watching and just not saying anything. Yeah. Never know. She's got spies out there. Just, Wait, no, we talked remember, about this. Go ahead, go ahead. Every kiss begins with K. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was a huge hint. Yeah, it, she already knows I'm going there. She just doesn't know what I'm getting her. <laughs> I might get her a piece of old metal or something. Well, at, least, at least you went to K and not freaking Jared. Oh, he went to Jared. Oh, he got Jared. Shut up. I mean, if I <laughs> catch the those commercials. I gotta, we got a K's credit card. No, just playing. Um, no, I actually like. I actually prefer K's over Jared's because, um, to me, Jared's is basically just a. Uh, if you don't have this amount of money or you don't look like this, then we don't even want to talk to you. Peace. Yeah, I don't like places that profile you like that. See, that's what I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a rich person that looks like a total bum and drives a shit car. And I'm gonna walk into places to like and just be like, yeah, I like to look at uh, some of your cars. Like, uh, oh, sir, I'm sorry, uh, I don't have time right now. And then I'll just be like, all right. And then I have a real car pull up and be like, ha No, I have a helicopter pull, pull, pick me up. Like, peace, nigga. <laughs> That's, That's it. Fu- <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. That'd be I, was waiting, s- I was waiting for more. You're going to say more. And then I was just like, okay, dead air. Whoa. No, no, I mean, p- picture that in your head. Someone, like, profiles you and says, this guy doesn't have money, and all of a sudden you have a helicopter pick you up. That's a big, that's a nice, you know, middle finger to someone. <laughs> well, I, I, I told my wife that um, when we go buy a truck, me a new truck, um, and we have cash for it, I'm going to go and be like, I want that truck. I want this on it, this on it, this on it, this on it, and this in it. Pickup truck? Yeah. With a um, king, king ranch? If they, say, with a big... if they say, well, it's this much, sir, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't want payments. And then if they give me a hard time, I'll walk straight out of there and go to the next dealership. I don't yeah. care. You know, it's funny, buy, too. I won't buy a Chevy anymore. 
That's what's funny about it too. They like if if you have cold hard cash, people give you a hard time about that. They want you to be stuck into a payment plan. It's like why? I got I got the full payment right now. Let's get this done. Where are you supposed to payment? I told the last time I did that I bought a twenty thousand dollar car and I paid cash for it. And the guy is like, Oh man, that's awesome. I was like, Yeah, you just got a chunk of change for commission. Have a great day. Go take your old lady out to nice dinner. Well, the other guy is like, why didn't you tell him to get on a payment plan so then you could have made more money? Yeah, because the payment like, yeah, plan. That's, that's something to say to your freaking customer right in front of you. You know what? I took the contract. I took the paperwork that he was filling out. I ripped it up right in front of him and walked the fuck out. See, have and, a good day, dude. And you know what it is? They, when they get you on those payment plans, a lot of times you go upside down on the loans and, you know, on the finances because you're paying more interest than you are on the principal. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't want to, if I'm going to go buy a new vehicle or a new truck or new something, I, I'm going to pay cash for it. I'm not going to, the only thing that I'm not going to sit there and pay cash for is probably when we, you know, go build a house. Yeah. But I'm, that's, I mean, it's going to be a quite a big house, but, um, so I mean, we won't be able to have a couple million dollars in cash really. So. Just remember though. Just remember when we get rich, we'll we'll go dress up like buns and go into like a dealership or something. Any place we can make a big purchase, and then definitely. And if one of us are rich, we're just gonna say, "Hey, dude, I'm gonna fly you up here. We're gonna have some fun for the day or something." No, but I'm saying this is our routine. We go in, dress up like bums, be all ghettoed out, whatever, you know, and I even make play it off like we have money. And then say, hey, I'm interested in, in this, in this uh, over here, whatever it is. But it has to be like some big purchase that normally the, you know, a normal person, average day, per, everyday person can't afford. And then when they like, they ignore us and say, oh, they're too busy or whatever. Say, oh, or they try to talk us down to like the entry model, the cheapy model. I'd be like, okay, I'll just go somewhere else. And then we'll have that helicopter pick us up. Like, boom. You're all about a helicopter picking us up, aren't you? <laughs> I don't it's know why. Point. It's not the point that we, we all we have to do is just you know pull a bankroll out of our pocket or something. No, but that's the thing. That bankroll, that's like so cliche, like pulling out the fat wad of cash. And that's something like a drug dealer could do that. You know what I mean? But right. like I have a helicopter, like be able to like have the kind of pull to have a whole all the traffic stopped in the street and then have a helicopter swoop down and pick you up. I don't know where I don't know what city you're planning on doing this in, but uh, <laughs> you tell me when you get the permits for to land a helicopter in the middle of the street. But go, yeah, yeah. dude, it's a, it's just a hilarious image I've always had. In my head. We'll just we'll just make sure it's a. Um, we'll just make sure that we get you know of course get clearance for the area, but we'll just land you know just outside the dealership and be like, nah, our rides here. Yeah, I know. Like, what are the odds it's gonna be a, a helipad on ground level? Well, I know. What, what are the odds that we're ever gonna do this? <laughs> <laughs> Keep the dream alive, brother. Keep the dream alive. By the way, back to the Valentine's Day conspiracy, and it, this relates. You know, it is a conspiracy because it's exactly what we're just talking about, where you, you get put into a position. You know, and it happens to men and women alike. We start doubting ourselves, right? Because. During Valentine's Day, there's like a mainstream kind of, you know, a, a image they're trying to portray, like of how things should be. Let's say, Get you know, significant other this, or they're not gonna love you anymore. Yeah, exactly. Or you need to look like Peace. this uh, if, if you want them to still love you or stay with you. Or this is the way a happy cu couple lo looks, and this is how they, where they live, and what, what what kind of car they drive, and all this stuff they put in your head. You know, and it's and, and really, if you look at it. You know, Valentine's Day is supposed to be grounded on, like, you know, a, a saint's. Uh, it's supposed to be a religious holiday, you know, St. Mm -hmm. Valentine. But no one even knows about that or, or even knows what St. Valentine was or any of that stuff. I don't even remember anymore, you know. And I, and I, was, I grew up in the church and stuff. But, you know, now it's all about, uh, you know, all these big companies and marketer, marketers. They said, you know what? We need some holiday that we could push in there in between this holiday and, and, and put it after, you know, Christmas. Because we don't, there's kind of a dead space there. And that's all it is. And, if, and I'm telling you, dude, the Christmas is done. And soon after, I'm, I, I swear, as soon as the Christmas stuff goes down, Valentine's stuff is right up. It's a conspiracy, man. They're just trying to find more ways to just take more of our hard earned money. And not to mention, some people that file t their taxes early and get their quick, their fast return, or they get the the tax advance, right? Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, they have the the extra money in their pocket, and it's like, oh shit, hey, buy buy this for for your better half, or else they won't love you anymore. <laughs> what do you well, think, man? That, and that and that's mostly I don't. Um, <clears throat> when I'm when I'm looking at uh, holidays and and whatnot, I buy things for my wife, not because a you know, she expects it or anything that she don't. Um, um, it's it's me though. I know for a fact that Valentine's Day, she loves flowers, even though she doesn't say she does or she does so she does say it though. But I know that um, even if I can't get her a, an expensive gift or you know you know whatever, if I just get her flowers, that's enough for her. She doesn't expect anything else. Now the one thing that I can't really stand is yes like you said you you get kind of caught up into back into whenever there's a holiday it's Christmas all over again <laughs> because either do you really want to like with the the K's and the Jared's and all that stuff if somebody's going to K's and Jared minus some of the you know holiday deals that they got they're going to be spending hundreds of dollars and if they have, you know, any credit cards or any kind of whatever that they don't have to pay for it right now, guess what? They're just putting themselves further in debt. There's no point in it. I don't understand some of the people. And now there are some women out there that say, hey, I better get this or else. Or I better get this or I'm leaving you or whatever. If a woman's going to say that, send the bitch out the door and say, have a great day. Because for one, she really doesn't care about who you are. She really doesn't care about what you want. And if you have to buy her that many gifts, you're not going to be taking care of her that much unless you have, unless you're a millionaire, unless you make hundred hundred fifty k a year. <laughs> if a woman's with you because of how much what you can give her, I guarantee, and I will tell you that right now, she is not the one for you. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah, you know, and on the, but on the flip side, you know what happens sometimes too. Is that it plants the seed of doubt? The thing is, this is what people need to get in their mind. In their mind, yeah, a, a, a good, a special day between people that care about each other is any day you want to make it. You don't mm -hmm. need to do it on a holiday. Someone need to tell you this is Valentine's Day. You have to get someone a gift. No, there's less thoughtful if you do it because you just, it's an obligation. And if you do a random present just because, hey, I was thinking about you when I was in the store and I and I got you this. I don't care if it's a sandwich or a freaking car, <laughs> I mean, whatever, or a helicopter, <laughs> you know, you know, something, you know, it's just a matter of letting the person know that you thought about them. So, you know, I just, I just, I just, you know, I, whenever it gets close to Valentine's Day and I see all these, you know, decorations up, I, I, you know, I get a little annoyed. I guess you know, so. yeah. I don't, even, I don't even want to see this crap anymore. I'm just so tired <laughs> of it. I'm yeah, I understand, you know, holidays like this, Valentine's Day, um, you know, a lot of the, the love, you know, uh, I guess there's only one or two, um, but like the, the, the birthdays, the Valentine's Day and maybe, you know, Christmas, really, it's all up to who you are and who you're married to or who you're, deal you're dealing with. I mean, Yogi, your wife, your wife probably doesn't expect diamonds and all that shit every year. No. First couple of years, of course, you may want to get her some, you know, five year anniversary, the 10 year anniversary, the big, the, the big, the big times, you know, where you want to get those diamonds or you want to get the, the extra, you know, extra stuff for, because tell you right now, Valentine's day is, I don't, it's another day to me. It's just another day. It's a, it's another day where, Oh, it's February 14th. Oh, happy Valentine's day, baby. Love you too. Here's your gift. <laughs> See ya. You know, there's nothing, um, there's nothing that's, you know, for a guy's point of view, there's nothing that's really special about it. I mean, yeah. am I wrong? No, I'm with you. I mean, you know, I think in the infancy of the relationship, when it's when relationship's still volatile, you know, it still kind of has an effect. But once you understand each other and what you truly value, then it's like, oh, who cares, you know, we'll make a special moment whenever you want. We don't need to have someone tell us when that should be. Yeah, exactly. And and like I said, it's it, you can, we can go on and on about this over and over again. It's basically whatever, I mean, with Valentine's, the conspiracy, I don't know if I would use that word conspiracy, but yes, 
Um, it's a, it's another holiday where they expect you to spend an enormous amount of money and then pay it off later. Is what it is, and <laughs> that's just my, that's my opinion, of course. Yeah, not happening. And that's just what it is. But well, uh, we do have one more quickie for this, and we're not really we didn't really do a feature. We're actually just going to do a bunch of quickies, kind of what you'd like to do on Saturdays and stuff. Never mind. <laughs> well, I figure since we have so much news, you had a feeling. Yeah, there's a lot of news there tonight, but we do have it. <laughs> um, and this quickie, we need, dude, we really need to get sound bites, sound board, sound, uh, sound clips, because then I can just play quickie, you know, something like that when we just start doing this. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Podcast love for all. How about I do the sound? I'll do the sound bit for you. What? I'll do the sound bit for you right now. Ready? Okay. Go. Quickie! (laughs) Podcast love for all. Every episode, we give a shout out to all our favorite podcasts, especially those who we collaborate with, and especially that, you know, when we we get guest hosts. And we get offers to go on their podcast. We definitely want to shout those guys out. Um, and 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 in my Yogi's mixed bag of podcasts, there are we're live, straggler, straggling, staggering. I, mean, I can't even st- say it. I can't even speak. <laughs> staggering stories. Ron's amazing stories. Jim Harold's campfires. Tales to terrify. Danger Broom, the X-Men comic. I said that all wrong. Anyway, let's just... just... <laughs> A lot of the podcasts that me and myself and Yogi do like to listen to are We Are Alive, Staggering Stories, Ron's Amazing Stories, Jim Harold's Campfires, Tales to Terrify, and Danger Room. I think I said it right, right now this time, right? Oh, well, there's more, though. The com the X Men comics com- commentary podcast. That's a, that, a tongue, that's a, that was a tongue twister. That's a lot. That's a lot. Worse you gotta than say it on our radio. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, no, no, the snickerdoodle. Yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, no, Darkest Obi, radio. Obi, Obi, Obi. You have to say say the danger room in your best hero voice. Like say that whole bit. I'm gonna highlight for you right there. You gotta say in your in your best superhero voice. Danger Room, the X Men comic commentary podcast. That was really good. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to play? <laughs> now, make, now right. do the next one in the scary voice. Go. Darkness Radio. That's good. That's good. Next. Nah, this one you can say in a nerdy voice. Uh, guys, what I want to say is, uh, I do want to give a shout out to the Seth Cobb Gordon's setup school. And uh, yeah, and the Bean Cast is a really good guys too. <laughs> I don't know. It's a nerdy girl, nerdy girl, <laughs> nerdy girl. That's a small person. Nerdy girl. That was... I said it. The, I said it the, the PC way this time, just for you, Ob. <laughs> oh, thank you. She's a, <laughs> she's a little person. Which apparently yeah. I hear that that's 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 not cool anymore. It's not in anymore. Now that's a new thing. Vertically challenged, I believe, or something. Vertically challenged. Uh, yeah, shorty. That's a short, person. Short I mean, we, we, we had this conversation a couple weeks ago. Remember, you were calling him a midget. Yes. He's you and Soldier. And I constantly, through the whole show, little person guys, little person guys. And you're <laughs> like, you know what? Screw it. You guys are not going to do it. Little person, no. Anyway, let's keep going. We do recommend you guys to listen to Stitcher. Listen, we recommended listening on Stitcher because of their smart radio option. Let you find out more stations like the ones you like amongst these podcasts are some native formats, which are great for late night listening right before, right before or heck as you fall asleep. That was weird. <laughs> We got to We got to Right before you do, or to help you fall asleep. I think that's how it's supposed to go. I we gotta learn some. We gotta learn you on the voice acting. I'm gonna. <laughs> we gonna. You know what? I'm gonna write a script. We're gonna do. Oh, that's it. That's the next thing for us. We're gonna do a audio book. 
I'm going to write a short story, and I'm going to have Obi read it. No, we're not. Me and Obi will read it. We'll shit. take turns. Oh, my God. We'll, we'll, we'll like, have, oh, my God. It's going to be epic. I'm going to do it. It's going to be a supplemental horseplay episode or something, like episode X. Not even going to be a number. We'll be Roman numerals. I, t- I take it over, though. I take it over. I take it over for you, bro. I got you. I got you. All right, ready? Take it over. I take it over. He's like, I'll take it over for All you, right, man. So if it doesn't say anything. Okay. What's the, I need you to confirm. You're just smiling. I need, I need audio co- confirmation. You know, there's people there's people that are not watching the video. They're not watching. They don't know what's going on. They can't see when you're picking your nose. Yogi Zilla, I do it. <laughs> I was not picking my nose. <laughs> Yogi. Obi, stop picking your nose. Stop. Go. Put the, put the finger away. Okay, I'm sorry. Put right. your pants up. I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> so on one of these podcasts are some uh, narrative formats, and uh, and it's cool because you, you know how it will be like how they have. I know you've heard some of these, but a lot, a lot of you know you probably missed because there's a lot of a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of podcasts, but some of these are like old ra- old style radio shows. You know where like you know it's all just uh, you know they're reading off scripts and and they do little sound effects and stuff. Oh man, it's, it's so good, dude. And um, so that's what I meant by the narrative format. And I and I personally like these. Like a good example are um, staggering stories. Ron's amazing stories. Jim Harrell's campfires. You know, tales to terrify. They're you know these are great things to listen to when you're going to sleep, because uh, you know it's just you let let your imagination run wild. And plus, a lot oh. of them are scary stuff too. Tales of terror while you're going to sleep. Okay. As they walk said, through oh, yeah, the best. dark corridor, go yeah. sleep, little yeah. boy. But you yeah, can't, no. you can't listen to horror like during the day, or like, you know, like. I definitely not gonna listen to horror when I'm going to sleep. Uh, well, okay, maybe not be, be when as you're going to sleep. I'm a little weird, but at, at night, you know, maybe while you're relaxing, and I'm then. Or you could watch it as you're laying down, and then when you're about to sleep, put something happy on, a like comedy or something, to w- cleanse your palate. There you go. I don't want anybody to say write us right into us and be like, you know, tweet at Yogizilla, tweet Obi Wan X Two. Screw you guys. I have nightmares. I have night terrors, and I keep wetting my bed. Thanks. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> I'm blaming Obama for other people's nightmares. But yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we blame him for everything else. We might as well. We're not gonna get on that. I know. I just, it's just the it's the meme. I had to keep the meme going. But uh, <laughs> and also, you know, the la- the la- last couple of ones, you know, they- these are all like non gaming podcasts. That's why we threw them in there so you could, you know, if if you're new to podcasting, you know, and you just happen to stumble upon us, you know, th- this is some stuff that could add some variety to your playlist. Uh, the last couple of what we mentioned, Seth Godin, Startup School, and the Beancast are good if you're curious about marketing and small business. So a little bit of everything in that playlist that we, we shared. And, um, you know, I think there's something for everyone there. And uh, also... Can't forget, we have three other ones that I'm not going to forget because... Oh, yeah, 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 your, your picks. But yes. I'm just going to say, the X-Men comics commentary, at the very least, for all the geeks out there, you got to listen to that, like... The you know how I remember Mystery Science Theater three thousand how they used to always do the little mm-hmm. it's the same kind of shtick but they do it with the X Men comics it's great all right take it away Obi of course I don't have any picks because um you tease I don't watch many podcasts tell you the truth um I do watch it's uh one one on three and um that is a it's a gaming podcast I do watch uh, Convert to Raid as well, which is a World of Warcraft only podcast, which is great. And of course, we do have to always remember Knuckleballer Radio, of course, Zombie Cast, and what's the other one? Oh man, I'm hurting <laughs> right now. We got, I we got them at I the. Can remember though, man. We have them at the Knuckleballer Radio. We have them at the plugs. Switch. We'll get them. We'll mm-hmm. get them. We'll get them at the plugs. Right. Deals for cheap bastards. Ugh. Yogi, are you a cheap bastard? Absolutely. Obi, are you a cheap bastard? Absolutely. 
This is the segment right here, guys, where we <laughs> go through and ask each other, are we cheap bastards? And nine times out of ten, yeah, we're cheap bastards. So we got a little thing for you guys, for the gamers out there that just want to play video games with us or with other people, of course. I think that just sounded right. But we go around looking for the cheap bastard deals of the week, games that are usually under $10, and um, we'll just go with it right into what is free to play this week on Steam. Um, the same games are free on Steam to play this week. It's, <laughs> I hate to say it. There was no <laughs> new, there, all right, let me say it like this. There were no new games put on the free to play uh, Steam Watch this week. Um, but on another hand, Borderlands 2 is now on sale for $9.99. And remember, uh, the Steam FTP weekends, it ends on Sunday. So the big sales end on Sunday at midday. And usually midday, it's about 1. Is it uh, EST or is it uh, Central? Uh, it's around it's, 1 it's Pacific. Central. One Pacific, so it's going to be it's right actually, around no, o'clock. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually noon Pacific, noon Pacific, and like around three Eastern. Three. So uh, if you guys know that noon Pacific, three Eastern time is when the sales around about the time the sales going to end. So make sure you guys go get those games really fast. The free to play, the Steam free to play weekend, and Sunday, like I was saying. Sorry about that. That's a little bit mixed up. He's changing words, of course. Again. I'm sorry. I'm In the sorry. show notes, which is but, making me go up a line instead of saying where I'm supposed to be at. But but Borderlands those, 2 is free to play this weekend. Uh, yes. It yes. is, and then it's only $9.99 if you want to get it. Um, and it's I, a good I, deal. If you, if you guys do like Borderlands, if you guys did try the first one, the second one, is really, it's a lot better, I think. Um, I do enjoy it. There's some that's some PvP, just like everything else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yogi, are there any games that you picked up that you could let the viewers know uh, that's uh, in the cheap bastard care category this week? Um, I was looking at one called uh, something draw. It's like a pirate game. Quick draw. Oh no, that's the gun. That's the uh, Western cowboy game. Yeah, no, I thought it was called Seven Something Draw. That looked kind of interesting. It was a card game, but Dead Man's Draw. There we go. Yeah. That looks kind of interesting. That's a ten dollar game. But other than that, uh, not, not too much that I've noticed. Uh, nothing, nothing's really on my radar right now. Though Dead Island is free right now on Xbox Live with games with gold. So make sure you pick that up. That's free for download until like February 14th, 15th, I think. So free. That's the best price. Can't beat that. Hey, free, free. Another website. We do have one website that we do for those that are watching. Um, for those that are not watching, I'm putting up a website. It's it's a cheap www.cheapshark.com. That's cheap as in cheap bastard. Shark as in this fish. Dot com. You guys, should go check that out. There's games. I mean, they got bundles of games that you get for dollars, pennies on the dollar. It's really good deals for all that. And make sure you guys look at Slick Deals. I don't have uh, this for the viewers, but SlickDeals.net as well. Um, it's uh, they're both the same kind of company, the same kind of website where they give you uh, quite a few games for one low price, which is really, you know, bundles are bundles. If you're a gamer and you like to play a lot of different games, this is the stuff for you. It's like these have deals on other stuff too, so mm -hmm. yeah, kind of like, like Woot. There's deals every every day on, on Steam, Cheap. Uh, cheap shark and slick deals. Um, there's deals on it every day. There's different deals. Usually the deals will change, you know, weekly to where they'll have different bundles on sale for you know whatever they're gonna do. But usually it's it's was about once a week they change and then they add some every now and then, which is a good deal. So, all uh, moving on, we are almost done here, Yogi. I know it's actually quite a long show already. <laughs> I'm good. Indie watch. <laughs> 
this is the segment where we actually just, as we're throughout the week, we actually look at some of the indie games that are out there, some of the newer ones that are coming out, and some of the games that are actually just trying to get on a mainstream such as Steam. Um, the one, once again, we want to make sure that we do support Armada online. It is on Steam Greenlight. We guys make sure you guys, if you guys do want to try that, the alpha is out. You guys can go download that and check that game out. Myself and Yogizilla do both play that. Um, I didn't say that earlier, but I did play some Armada this week too. Um, so go go vote. If you guys do like the game, go ahead and vote so we can get that on Steam so we can actually get it to more people, which is, is really, really good. Um, and then make sure that uh, if you do like some Space Sims, check out FTL, Angle of Attack, Starpoint Gemini 2 comes out with the first game. Space Hawk, Steam Marines, Sins of Solar, Empire Series, and, and, and many, many more. Um, we do, guys, want you to remember that uh, Dungeon Keeper. Do you remember Dungeon Keeper, Yogi? Yep, yep, sure do. We were talking about earlier. Dungeon Keeper's the shizzles. You slap up some, 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 slap up some knights, you know? Mm -hmm. Can't beat that. It's like SimCity meets Diablo. The re and 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 part of it, I I played it a couple times, but it was it was too much for me. I did couldn't. Dude, any game you can slap people up in, it has to be good. That should be on the top of your it, list. It is good, but I'm just sometimes I just want to go. It's a little Back overwhelming. Something, you know, something else. Because you know how I am. I'm the kind of guy, the gamer that uh, I really try to stick with, you know, one or two main games, and then I try to play those ones, and then just do a few things with, you know, viewers and whatnot. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really comfortable with what I'm playing right now. If one of the viewers do want me to um, uh, play a game uh, with them, of course I play League of Legends and and whatnot like that. But uh, I will definitely. Definitely uh, do some other stuff. Make sure oh, you yeah. guys check out War of the Overlord. Overworld. Let me say that again because I just screwed it up. War <laughs> of the Over Overworld. That's another tongue twister, and I have no idea why. Because your brain is telling you that it should be Underworld, but it then meant... it says Overworld. And I know, I, I know what else. I know what else. I know what else it is too, because mm -hmm. you're thinking, you're thinking Underworld. And then you're like, oh my gosh, that, that brunette's boobs, they show it in, in the third movie, and that wolf does not deserve the vampire booty. I understand, bro. I'm there, I'm with it. I'm, I'm there with you, bro. I am there with you. I swear to God, I'm going to get Fang's put right here. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember uh, what her name I, is. I know who she is because I could remember that anywhere. Yeah, she's got, uh, she's got like two different colored eyes, I think. Kate yeah, Beckinsale, Kate, Kate Beckinsale, is that her? Yeah, her eyes are actually green and blue. Yeah, she's a, she's a beautiful lady. Who are you but talking goal... to? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, like I said, well, we, we do want you guys to check out War of the Overworld. The goal of this game is to show heroes who is the boss and who is the best villain ever. It's basically a comic book game. Again, if you can be the best villain or the best hero, let's check it out. Something it's, we might check out in the future. It's the dopeness. It's the dopeness. Yeah. And it's still an uh, early access kind of game, so the more people support that, the better it'll become. And, and, and by the way, in chat, the reason I said, who are you talking to is because Carthaden was asking, who are you talking to? <laughs> and talking Je to my and co-host over there. And Jeffrey here is also there. That's some, we got some lurkers in there. Yeah, Big sh shout-outs. They come in on the tail end of the show. They so, do. hey, since you guys missed most of the show, don't forget, we're going to keep plugging the crap out of this. Check us out on Stitcher Radio. It's official. We're at Stitcher Radio. And you know what? Me and me and Obi are going to brainstorm. We're going to put our, our big bald heads together. And we're going mm. <laughs> to create light. <laughs> See it? Bling. And we're going to figure out uh, what, what our next steps will be. If we're going to get on some other network, maybe maybe our iHeartRadio. And iTunes, I don't know. iTunes needs to get their stuff together. Apple needs to get their stuff together. iTunes will be a third choice. We want to get on iHeart first. But I just did try it out. You guys can go to Stitcher 
And you can go to Stitcher and actually put it in. Go stitcher.com forward slash horseplay, and it'll come up. Um, it'll come up with a couple of different choices, but check it out. You cannot, if you guys are looking at a couple different horse plays in Stitcher, um, you guys will know who we are. Because basically, look at our faces right now. Look at the <laughs> beard. You guys can tell which one's ours. I guarantee it. There's not yes. a we are going to have a link. How is this the one with the best cover art? Just saying. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Blaze it up. What are we blazing, Car? Don't answer that. Mm, uh, yeah, that's why I quiet. As we're going out, guys, we do love to cross-promote our favorite podcast, blogs, channels, and Garner channel. Okay. Ga- Garneria? What? I didn't say I didn't say nothing about Garneria, dude. Oh, Ooh, see, I, I talked about Plague Incorporated, and you're like, that game sounds good. I want to create diseases. I, I'll I be Garneria. I don't even I don't even want to play that. I don't even want to talk about <laughs> I'm that. Kid, I'm, Captain, I'm Captain Garneria. <laughs> but we do love to cross-promote our, our favorite podcasts, blogs, and channels to garner more mutual support from them as well. So we do want you guys to check out the um i'm gonna not even go in order because i it's not supposed, supposed to be in order but we do have some selections that we're gonna and other sponsors that we're hopefully gonna get in the future um all music was played or was provided by techno Axe on youtube or you can go to technoax.com and that's t-e-k-n-o-a-x-e.com if any uh if you would like any if you would like any sound effects for uh, here in the future, we are going to have some sound effects on the show as well as some other things. Go to freesound.org for free sound, sound effects of your pleasure. They have everything from burps to farts. You can get it all. Humble Bundle <laughs> Store. Hum, hum, humblebundle.com store. Everything that you do spend in that store, 10% of all proceeds go to charity, and that is confirmed by... Quite a few people. I think Soldier ended up confirming at first, but we all have confirmed it. So, you guys, go check that out if you guys like bundles of games for really cheap. That's another cheap bastard plug-in, I guess you could say. And Humble Bundle is also good if you want a good tongue twister. Humble Bundle, Humble Bundle, Humble Bundle. Just say Knuckleball <laughs> Radio Hunter a whole bunch of times. <laughs> Snicker, no, it's Snickerdoodle. Remember, we're gonna we're gonna tell them to change the name, Snickerdoodle. Snake, yeah, we got to make sure we do that. man. And if you guys did not catch this podcast, you guys can catch the whole podcast on Uncut, by the way. This, we, don't, we don't put it in cut versions. I do on my YouTube page. But highlights and videos and audio cast are all put up right here on Obi-Wan X2 and Yogizilla. They're both channels, YouTube and Twitch. As of right now, I don't have anything on my YouTube page. I'm having some. Yeah, I saw. I saw. I'm having, I'm having some difficulty. Shut up. Some I'm having t- some. Uh, I'm gonna having eat some your brains. Can we do that next week? I'm having some difficulties. <laughs> getting... We're setting the stage for the zombie episode. Yes. But also avoiding, avoid Google's long beat stick. I'm not. I don't even know. I don't even know what you're doing with that. So yeah, this is uh you know if you're looking to avoid Google's long beat stick, go to uh, let's play dot dot com and uh, look up the hashtag who let's play on Twitter, and that'll help you avoid getting uh put on the YouTube timeout or being banned altogether because you know they're being super anal with uh <laughs> yeah the chat's very distracting right now. <laughs> by by the way by the way, uh. uh our episodes on, on Stitcher, you have a limited window to catch our episodes, all right? So you better catch them now before the old episodes disappear. Of course, you go to the website and catch all of them, but, you know, still go to Stitcher, support it. We, that, you know, supporting Stitcher helps us out too and helps them out. There are great people over there. We've been able to work with them closely, and they're going to help us out with this, spread the word about our, what we're doing. I can't stress that enough. And also, I spent some extra delicate attention. I put some extra delicate attention. <laughs> the, the, the chat. The chat. Do we? Yeah, anyway, it's, I, it's, 
Which, yeah, no, it's getting it's getting a little crazy. It's like the, the the live crowd came in now at the end of the show. You guys are crazy. Yeah, we dude. love you though. We love you though. But uh, so yeah, episodes one through four, I believe, or two through four. There's some pretty cool music and remixing in there, and I think three in particular or two. Listen to Obi's voice in the beginning. That's all I'm gonna say. I, I, there's some there's some dope epicness going on there. Oh man, <laughs> it is it is epic. Yeah, I heard that last. I heard that a couple days ago. Actually, I'm gonna play it for you guys. Did you did you hear? Yeah, send me a link to that. I'm gonna play it for him right now. I don't but know. Anyway, if... We're gonna get through this. Check out some of our friends at Gaming History 101 Sega Nerds. The Gaming of the Shrew, formerly Sega Addicts, GP, R, GP, RP Grinders, R9 Cast, Knuckleballer Radio. <laughs> I yeah, you got it, it, bro. Zombie Cast, and there it is, B-Team Produc- Podcasts. Wait, B-Team Podcast. I was getting ready to say Productions. <laughs> I'd say that all those are on the All Game Networks and on Stitcher. And or on Stitcher. So the gaming, um, we just wanted to all go check out some of those guys. If you guys didn't enjoy this podcast, um, those are some of our, you know, especially uh, with Knuckleballer and Zombie um, cast, along with, uh, I think there was one more that we're talking to. Uh, they're going to be guests on our show. Uh, you guys know Normie. She was a guest last week and more than likely going to be next week, I think, or the week after. Don't know yet. Um, <laughs> but we're going to be doing, uh, of course, a big zombie talk. So you guys got to check that out as well. The gaming community has really responded positively. We really appreciate this, guys. And what we do want to say is, from myself and Yogi, thank you. Um, you guys have responded very positively, and this is more Yogi than me, but to the articles that Yogi has been has been putting out, you guys can see down on the bottom below his camera uh, when there's a scrolling text with his uh, Yomar dot me. <laughs> right, what did I just do? Oh no, with that you in the chat Other again. Other geeky stuff at dualpassionline.wordpress.com and yogizilla.tumblr.com as well. And that is a new one, guys, so make sure you guys check that out. We'll be reblogging top content from these sites and other networks uh, on the new Geeky Antics Network global site. Gang for short. So if you guys want to check that out, we do have a website. We have our network coming out as well. So, you guys, it's some really good, exciting information. I can't even talk. I'm talking so much. (gasps) But yes, it is official, and it's for real. We're going to say this again. We've only said it 16 times during the show. I've counted. Horseplay is live on Stitcher, and soon I'm going to change this to iHeartRadio <laughs> or iTunes. <laughs> Depends on if iTunes gets their head out of their asses or not. Yeah. But leave us some reviews and your favorites, um, and, and favorite subscribe. Uh, talk shoe and stitcher guys uh that's it's a big thing talk shoe and uh, talk shoe.com forward slash is it horseplay as well they got a weird thing there it's hard to find us but we'll have the link to that on our steam community mm-hmm. and it's up right now on the geeky antics.wordpress.com website okay good deal so if you guys do want to check those out um, just hit that up. We do have uh, two, as you guys see, if you guys are watching the live cast, as steamcommunity.com forward slash groups forward slash horseplay. You guys come come uh, visit, us, visit us on Steam. Um, we are going to be soon uh, for the um, doing giveaways and, and a whole bunch of stuff like that for uh, things to come, and that's where we're going to be start putting our stuff is on the Steam community page as well as the website. So you guys make sure you guys go get on the website, get on there and, and, and join it and make sure you guys join our Steam community page as well. It's uh it's a really big, really big uh exciting time for my uh, Yogi Zilla and myself and, and horseplay as a whole because we're just growing and it's all you guys that are helping us and we really appreciate that. Yogi you want to talk about some uh, upcoming episodes in the future? Yeah, so like uh, we mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing 
it's a little bit of uh, Walking Dead talk. Uh, hopefully in the next episode, episode 10, which is going to be our first double-digit episode. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, well, technically, we're already at double digits if we count episode zero, but that one disappeared somehow. The, the internet ate it. <laughs> so, uh, we hope to have some of the gang from ZombieCast join us to discuss, uh, The Walking Dead. And, um, and then, uh, this will set the stage for episode 11, which will be our zombie-themed show. Unless we do a next episode, I don't know yet. We'll figure that out. But, uh, there will be a lot of zombie talk coming up. We'll talk about Walking Dead, you know, Nana's coming back to AMC, and we'll talk about uh, zombie games, zombie books, zombie food, if you like eating brains, whatever it is. <laughs> as as uh, Obi makes a frowny face at the chat, like, the stuff that's going on in there. We definitely have the late night crew going on right now. We the do, freaks, man, like... they say, The freaks come out at night. The freaks come out at night. I don't know. But <laughs> we have one, one, if you guys aren't watching the live cast, we have a, a, a viewer, and I just want to say this in here. He thought horseplay. <laughs> he figured it was about fucking horses. STL. <laughs> what part of that do we even portray as... <laughs> I think he's being facetious. I'm really sorry that you don't understand. He's like, I'm conflicted. We're horse playing around. We're messing around. We're not doing anything <laughs> with horses. I guarantee it. Well, while we're on that note, we are not affiliated with, nor nor are we associated with by any way, any means, with the with the horseplay podcast. We are horseplay! Exclamation mark. They are the horseplay podcast, and we're cooler. Their their podcast cover sucks. And they're only available on iTunes, not Stitcher. I'm so, sorry. So. <laughs> In no way, shape, or form do we, dog, or no way, shape, or form do I condone what Yogi just said. I'm just saying that. <laughs> hey, they're only available on iTunes, so they probably won't even hear this because, you know, they don't even know about the awesomeness that is Stitcher. We're not being Coming paid to say that, by the there. way. <laughs> by the way, for a preview... Of, of what's coming up, uh, be sure to check out the Zombie Cast episode for February third, where I make a uh, guest appearance and we talk. Uh, we do some predictions and observations for The Walking Dead, and Ob, you need to get up on that episode so you yeah. can get so you could uh, <laughs> get a little crash course. And bro, 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 Whoa. I'm gonna do a uh, an article, a recap. Of of uh of like basically everything that's worth knowing from the first four seasons. Well, first three and a half because it's three whole seasons and then a half season. But right now, this Sunday that's coming up, they're continuing the rest of season four. Does that make sense? It does. So that's a, it. It made my brain explode at first, and I'm like, wait a minute, it's three and a half seasons because you know it's only half of season four. And it's like poof, head exploded. But yeah. <laughs> The episodes are pretty long, so it's it's a bit of a of a tall order to do a marathon run. You honestly, this some you could just skip around every other episode, and and you, and you probably won't miss too much because they recap the episodes in the beginning of each one anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you want to blaze through it, I definitely would love you to join the conversation. We're gonna have there's a lot of you like I know you like the soap opera elements like the drama, and there's a lot of drama because people in the apocalypse, you know, they act retarded, they don't know what to do. They're like, oh, what's going on? And I'm going to be a prima donna even though zombies are coming to eat our brains. You know, that's what happens. <laughs> so it's really going to be fun chat. I expect uh, we probably won't have too many topics. I think we're just going to go in there and completely freeball it. We'll have maybe a few topics to talk about, but not too much. That means there won't be a long bit of news for anyone that's worried about that. But uh, the news was fun today. We we talked about a lot of different stuff. We went off on well, some there tangents. Was, there was quite a bit that happened this past week, which was yeah. okay. I mean, we went off to some tangents to some good discussion points, so. But, uh, what else? What else? So, yeah, I think we covered everything. And, again, uh, Tony Ray, we're still trying to nail him down. Uh, we're alive, by the way. The to podcast. The floor. Yeah, nail him to the floor. Okay, he, he's, he's, uh, he's actually a vampire. That's the, his secret identity. But, uh, <clears throat> the thing about that is that we're. The what? I have wood stakes on my closet. That's good to have. And, and and some silver bullets too. Don't forget to have those just in case. And garlic, lots of garlic. But uh, we're 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 alive. Actually, I just heard this from a, a source 
that's close to the producers and writers of the show. The pod, that that uh, podcast is coming to a close soon, so they're gonna end the story soon, and I'm I'm curious how it's gonna end. So maybe I don't know. We might have to wait till Tony Ray is no longer recording for them. I don't know if they record, uh, if they recorded everything already and they're just releasing it uh, gradually or what. But I'm gonna try to catch up with my buddy, my buddy, and try to keep nail him down. He's a busy dude. <laughs> so but we'll get him yeah, on there. Watching quite a few of his uh, ask the devs and he's been doing them like crazy i know he's been churning them out so like yeah video seems like, like a big daily. focus yeah like daily man so they're trying to promote uh firefall hard but yeah if you guys have any ideas for guests that you'd like to see uh or guests you'd like to see come back I've, we've heard a lot of requests for normie to come back which uh you know we gotta find some more some more women <laughs> apparently that's the People look for that, like, where's Normie? So, basically, we have to have more boobs. Yeah. Got it. My boobs don't count. Well, well, that's I pretty much either. it. But you can, tweet, you can tweet us those suggestions at YogiZilla at, or at uh, Obi1X2. Or, of course, join our Steam community group, Horseplay. And, uh, yeah, start some conversation with us. And uh, one last note, Cartharidin, Carthar- I think I said it right. Mm-hmm. He said, if it was the apocalypse, I'd get all the animals to myself. <laughs> Don't tell me, dude. You, read that on the, you couldn't read that to yourself? Thanks. Oh, um, Lord. He's so funny. Yeah, and we do really appreciate you guys watching. You guys, make sure you guys do hit us up. And if you guys did not get the full show, hit us up on Stitcher and hopefully soon iTunes and iHeartRadio. Uh, we really appreciate you guys watching and listening. Thank you very much for watching and listening. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Clear. And ending the uncut stream in three, two, one. <laughs>